Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. The wrestling podcast will review every segment of Raw and give you guys the wrestling news of the week. My name on this podcast, you can look at it just below the video. It's just there. You can see there that, uh, you know, Turbo Tony in the description should be somewhere there. That will say my name. Perfect. There. And also, uh, we also have someone else that obviously does this podcast with us. As he has a variety of names that we know on the show, but for this week he is WCW's Dancing King, Disco Matt Ferno. <laughs> Don't ever put me in the same sentence as that again. <laughs> Do like a little bit of disco inferno? No? Not an inferno fan. No, no. no. Uh, well, yeah, you know, I had a few moves here, here and there, you know. Just, uh, outside of the wrestling ring, I think maybe. All right, I may have got drunk and danced at a wedding, but I wouldn't go put myself on a disco inferno <laughs> sort of level. Is your dancing more dad dancing like mine? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's fair enough. Um, Me, a pop and luck. Yeah, pop and luck. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you, you're still, to be honest though, even with our lack of, of dancing skills, we could probably win one of WWE's dance contests very soon. Greg Carly won tons of them, and he didn't. He couldn't even Somehow. fucking walk. So, yeah. yeah. How are you doing this week? Yeah, not too bad. Just wait for Santino, the hype man. Otherwise, then then that way I'll win. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. It's uh, it's been an interesting week in wrestling this week. Mm. Um, so much so that again, I've had to axe the fail of the week segment again this week on this show. Um, and the reason being is because there's tons of very interesting news stories that landed on our doorstep. Um, some weeks we don't get any news stories. This week we have five news stories, which is pretty pretty mental and yeah. they're, all, they're all pretty interesting. Um, and also we've got lots of plenty to talk about. We've got questions as well. From you guys, the listeners, the fans, which we will be answering here on the show as well. As we always do, we do enjoy it. It's our most enjoyable part of the episode each week, I think it's safe to say. That's it. Yeah. Um, And then obviously you've got our Raw review. uh, One night, um, obviously removed from the uh, Fast Lane pay-per-view. So we're going to be... If you wanted to catch our thoughts on that pay-per-view... Won't be on this episode. We already did an episode, so you can go back and watch that on our channel, Let's Talk More Wrestling Podcast. We review every pay per view. It never was going to end up being that way, but I think it's kind of turned out that way. Yeah, I swung you in that direction. It's fine. You, you did. You took me in that direction. So, um, so yeah, we hope you guys are having a great week. Without further ado, though, we have got plenty of wrestling content to talk about. Um, lots of stuff to be talking about. I also now have just remembered that we did promise to review the network this week. And we're not doing that. <laughs> I well, I don't know. It depends on how much time we have at the oh, end. Oh, we've already cut one segment. Are we really going to like? Oh, we're going to lose it because we've got too much to do. Yeah, I guess we'll still do that. Yeah, no, we've still got it in our in our thoughts. It's just yeah. man, and it was amount of news stories that landed on our on our desks this week was uh, was pretty pretty intense. Uh, let's get on with them actually one of the um, news stories that came out at the end of part of last week which we didn't cover fully um, it, and I'm kind of glad we did because I didn't think the news was fully out about where this guy was going after what yeah. happened and that's Samoa Joe he's left TNA he's gone and he's signed back with Ring of Honor and he is due to appear on one of their shows very very soon now I will state this first off and first hand Boy, oh boy, do TNA have a problem holding on to its star talent. Yeah. They have a big... What sort of happened there? Yeah. I mean, come on, guys. This is this is coming a little bit of a problem now. Whoever's focusing on the contracts and dealings and keeping the talent on their books, obviously is not doing that well. AJ Styles, gone. Samoa Joe is now gone. Those are two guys synonymous with the company. Yeah. Arguably. Big names uh, of the brand? No, no anymore. Yeah, the guy's been there since he started. You mean, was it 10 yeah. years Samoa Joe had been with TNA? Jesus. 10? 10 years, yeah. Jeez. I would state as well that I think that Samoa Joe during his tenure with TNA is criminal, was criminally underused. Criminally. The guy was, in my opinion, star talent. I have yeah. no idea why TNA... Here's, here's one bombshell for you, Matt. How many title heavyweight championship title runs do you think the man had? In TNA. In TNA. Three? One. One? Yeah. 
Oh, he was X Division quite a lot, wasn't he? Exactly. Yeah, I think that plays into a lot with Samoa Joe not being entirely happy with the company's direction. You know, and the fact that you know they've gone in this new direction now, which is you know spearheaded by Josh Matthews. I don't. I think the writing was on the wall for a while. If I'm honest, I think the only decision that Samoa Joe had made made was made a while back. That's my opinion on the matter. Yeah. But um, here's the thing that I will state about TNA. We don't talk about TNA much on this channel because I think we got burned by that company and their products far, you know, far months ago, really. The pair of us tried to review it and we didn't last that long. The problem with TNA has always, in my opinion, been not so much the talent pool they have, but the people pulling the strings. The management in terms of um, promoting their show and booking their show I don't, I don't think they've got even close to good in the last couple of years of what yeah, I've seen. It's been struggling. Yeah. I mean, you, you're a show that still, still you have Bobby Roode. Lashley can put out a good match and the guy's a fucking monster, right? You've got Kurt Angle, yeah, still on their show books and everything yep. along those lines. They've got the, you know, they've got the fucking walls on their, on their show. You should be able to make a fairly decent wrestling show with that talent on there. And sometimes you see glimmers of it and then sometimes you're like, why the hell did they go in this direction? And yeah. some of these segments that they make, where they try and be like WWE, <coughs> is the, the painful part of it. Um, yeah. And arguably... It's the whole WWE light, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, everyone knows this by now, with TNA. That they, I don't think they're... So, as, I think they're doing it more now that jo- Josh Matthews has gone there, which I think is a bet back step, personally. Yeah. I thought that we said that their reboot should be something that makes them, again, a a really good alternative. And, you know, was fresh. It, I, I didn't get that from their reboot. No. At all. It's just an extra font, a little, a little paste over, and it, uh, to me it doesn't work. Yeah. It's a company trying to be bigger than what it is. You know? I mean, it's the thing. It's like they need to be competing with a lot more companies nowadays. Is mm. like you've got WWE. They shouldn't be competing with WWE. That's not really going to happen. But what they need to compete with is like New Japan. They need to compete with Lucha Underground. Yeah, to become the biggest, the the biggest alternative. Yeah, the biggest alternative of the market. Because you got WWE. That's going to happen. That will always be the constant. Yeah. If if TNA were ever gonna, but who's the next the next big? Company? Yeah, I I, I I get what you mean, uh, but I I would always stand by the fact that if they were ever gonna challenge WWE, they've already missed that window. Yeah, um, you know the fact is that guys, and I mean this on very honestly, they are on a decline. You don't get kicked from a a you know a TV you know network. And have to move to a different one because you're doing well. That's because you're doing bad, right? Yeah. TNA fans may defend it or they're like, we like the product more than, than WWE. Fantastic. Great for you. But you can't bury your head in the sand and say, well, oh, TNA's doing great. It's not. Outright. Yeah, it's floundering. Yeah. You don't get kicked off your network because things are going right. If you were doing that great for, the, for, for Spike, they would have kept you. Bottom line. Yeah. But they didn't. And part, of, you know, maybe part of that reason, you know, is the reason why some of these stars are leaving because they can see the writing on the wall. I once said on here on this podcast that TNA stinks of a dying company, it reeks of it, and I stand by that as well. Yeah. That there was a point where TNA was getting better and better and rising up in popularity, numbers, TV, you know, uh, sponsorships, all this other stuff. Now they're on the de- decline. They ain't getting. They ain't going up. They're going down. That's the the brunt of it, to be honest. Yeah. Moving on from TNA, I don't like to talk about it too much because I think anything that we've said about TNA kind of covers what we think of it, and unless That's they it. do something drastic. Well, if, if I want an alternative, if it's not going to be NXT, I think it's probably going to be Lucha Underground for me. Yeah, I, after, I, I, after I caught what, caught a couple of their matches, I watched the first episode of Lucha, not the full episode. It was like the main event because they were posting up on their YouTube channel. I thought it was fine. I'm, I'm Which not even. Which match was it? Was it? Um... It was uh, Morrison against Pumba, who's now go- I think Morrison's going by some other name. I can't remember. But... It's John. Yeah. Um... Johnny Mundo. Johnny Mundo. That's it. Yeah. Well, um... so I saw Johnny Mundo versus so, Ty Leopard. Some Leopard guy? Or something like that? I can't remember. Regardless, it was good. That's yeah, what but I it was. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. So... And it's it fits well with. Because even the venue feels like an underground thing. Even the the whole ring, it looks like it's just sort of. They just rolled out a tarp over boxes sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Which, 
you know, it's, it's something that the hardcore wrestling fan wants. You know, I've heard good stories about Lucha Underground. It's just a shame that it's not easily accessible. I think yeah. that's one of the issues. I think that New Japan has had prior to their. I think Wrestle Kingdom Nine was very easy to get a hold of. But apart from that, I think New Japan. You know, maybe there isn't as much of a market over here, but it's not easily accessible for English markets. Yeah. And people might say, well, I can get it. I can get English dubs and all this other. Well, it's quite hard for the, the average Joe person to know, one, that a, that a better, and, you know, you'd arguably say in terms of production value, on its big events, New Japan can actually hold a candle to WWE. That's how big they are over there. Yeah. Um, but the average, you know, Western, you know, about wrestling fan doesn't know that New Japan exists. Yeah. You know, if I were to, uh, you know, tell my wife, oh, there's a company called New Japan Pro Wrestling, she'd be like, oh, that's fantastic, that's great. She doesn't understand that over there, that, you know, that's huge. You know what I mean? That's a huge company with such huge history. But, you know, that's part of the part of the fact of it. That's it? it. Everyone's boasting about their, um, about New Japan and their Bullet Club. Well, who who's created the Bullet Club? <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Well, no, uh, you know, and also the fact that you've got, TNA's loss with this is everyone else's gain and New Japan's gain because even though that Samoa Joe's gone to Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling have a very good working arrangement. So you could very likely see Joe wrestling big Japanese talent. Yeah. You know, um, in the future. Ooh, Why would you, you get to? to see Joe and AJ again? Yeah. How about? Why not? Oh, no. I think that's, you know, um, I think that AJ Styles leaving showed a lot of people you don't have to have western tv slots to get good money as a wrestler as long as you are well known you know yeah so i think Samoa Joe, arguably he'll make more money and he'll be much happier than when he wasn't in, in tna that's it as long as you've had as long as you've got the name which he's got yeah um people will pay to see Samoa Joe. maybe not the average yeah average joe wrestling fan no pun intended the average joe wrestling fan but the hardcore wrestling fan will want to see Samoa Joe wrestling. that's it well there's a um there's an event coming soon to my local area and chris saban's on the card yeah yeah. And guess what? I'm going. There you go. Exactly. You know, these people get work. It's easy. It's okay. Um, Solomon Crow. Here we go. Uh, who made his debut on NXT um, last week? Not this week, but last week. Yep. Um, he is a pretty cool story. I like when they come out with these sort of stuff. Uh, he actually saved a woman from a car crash. Um, he yeah. heard a a flip. You know, a car collision, and uh, the car flipped onto its back. And uh, he ran over, didn't even think about anything, pulled the woman out with, a, with the help of another person as well, so just to give them their props. Um, but yeah, he pulled them out w- with fear that the car might, you know, catch fire, and then obviously all sorts of problems there. And uh, there was a, a, you know, a news article made regarding the, you know, the, the collision, obviously, that he was involved in it. Yeah. Um, thumbs up to Solomon Crowe this week, everyone. I think that's all. That's it. And it's like the one thing I quite like about the whole story is just like, yeah, I don't care. I don't see it. It's just a, like I'm a hero or anything. It's just like I just expect someone to do the same for me. It's just like <laughs> modest. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, someone someone's got uh, someone's a bit humble there. You know. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember a similar story that that came out a couple of years ago with uh, if you remember Davari. I do remember yeah. Davari. Yeah. Um, and there was a belligerent drunk dude on a train who was making loads of problems, um, and Davari choked him out and threw him off onto the station, and uh, he got you know some press for that and. So yeah, you got stuff for it. Um, yeah, I thought the funny thing with that with Davari is that like the guy looked like stacked, way more stacked than he ever was in his WWE, you know, career. He just looked hench, you know. He was like, yeah. So good. So if he's going to choke you out. Guess what? You're getting choked. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, good stuff there. And you know, like I said, I'd hope that if I win a crash, that there'd be a nice person there that would be able to help me. Uh, not everyone, not everyone has that. Um, I'll go help them. Desire and unfortunately you don't know if you have that or not until something like that happens. So you Lots know, fair play. On to so that was a nice little piece, and I the reason yeah. I put that there is because the next piece fucking pisses the the hell out of me off. These are two segments involving women on this show that will makes my blood boil. Right here we go, and you didn't know about this man until I until I brought this up. So you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Okay. Act Yusakawa Yusa um, yes. is a female wrestler in Japan who wrestles under the Stardom organization. She had a match against another woman who I will not name because she doesn't deserve to be named. Okay? And she did the 
there's a few big no-nos. I would state this is the ultimate no-no. She legit beats the shit out of Yusakawa during the match. She attacked the woman under the pretense that they were having a fake wrestling match. You know, come on. You know, a not. I hate to say the word fake, but you know, in this sense because it's so extreme, a pre-planned wrestling match. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she beat this woman up at such a degree that her face was swollen, damaged, and I think she had like a damaged orbital socket, right? And, you know, when officials realised that this shit was going, you can find the video, it's out there, you can find it, right? It's very recent. And this woman damaged Yusakawa so badly that obviously management had to be like, fucking hell, what's going on here? And they stopped the match, obviously got you know, used to call out to get medical attention because she'd been legitimate, legitimately beaten up. Yeah. I think this is the one of the most ultimate disgraces that a wrestler can do, woman or man, can do in a wrestling ring. Yeah. And people I'll out say, there... I'll accept stiff, but, like, there's limits. Th- when you see the like damage that was done... Beat, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's attack, that's assault. And people that... Some of the idiot, I- idiotic people who say, wow, that, that woman's a badass... No, she isn't. She's a coward. Why would you start a fight with someone on the pretense that you're not actually going to fight them? To that, to me, is cowardice. Yeah. Right? That, to me, is taking an opportunity to do damage to someone when they've got all guards down because they're trying to work. You don't go... That's ridiculous. It's it's like the it's like me and... It, let's, let's say you and me, Matt, right? We're going to have a media event, Right? And we're yeah. going to wrestle a little bit. Instead, you're pissed off. And instead of us playfully wrestling around. I know it's not, you know, we're not playfully, you know what I mean. But you know what I mean, right? We're going to have like a, you know, show off a few moves. Instead of that, you, you you drop me to the mat and you punch me directly in the face. Yeah. That's wrong, obviously. And that was less than what happened here. I think this incident, first of all, to the woman who did this, who I will not name on the show. As I said, she doesn't deserve to have her name on our show, right? She is a disgrace to professional wrestling. She's a disgrace to the organization that hired her. And, it, you know, it may not be their fault. Fair enough. But she's still a disgrace to them. And she's a disgrace to the entire industry and herself. I have got no time for a woman who wants to break down those walls and take advantage in this fashion. Jesus! You're watching it now, yeah? I've, I haven't even started watching it and it's just the picture of her face. Yeah. That's just... Whoa! As far as I know, the woman has been, um, you know, has at least been arrested. Throw her ass in jail. I don't want her anywhere close to wrestling in the future. And I will further condemn any association or organisation that hires her in the future. If you do that to me, you've got no respect for the business. And I ain't got time for you. Yeah. This is horrendous, right? And this poor girl got beaten up. And like I said... So this woman isn't a badass. She isn't an ass kicker. She's a coward. That's exactly what she is. You know? It's ridiculous. Like, what do you think about this? Like, I've got no time for this woman. I think... Nah, this is... that's it. That'd just be a black book again. It'd just be the asterisk. For it. Should be an asterisk against yeah. her for the rest of her career. Yeah. Or anything. Just So the point is just like, you no longer work. Yeah, like, to me, that... That is her wrestling career, arguably her life done because she's going yeah. to jail. Her wrestling career now done. No one should ever hire her. And if an organization hires her in the future, maybe trying to get a quick buck, we don't know, you know, some scumbag promoter or something along those lines, try, you know, tries to hire her. Anyone that works, anyone that's asked to work with her, I would state that they need to leave that company immediately. She looks like she's got anger issues. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like. And you look at the, I because you know I looked into this because this disgusted me, this particular news article, and you know the fact that this happened, it disgusted me, right? Really did, got under my skin. I think people can hear it, right? I went back and looked at Yusakawa's history. She's actually a very nice woman, for I can see, who came from a very hard background to do the thing that she loves. And it doesn't matter. Let's say what happened here, right? She slept with the other guy's man, or she stole her husband, or. Broke into a house, stole her shit, or I don't care what what fuck what the fuck happened. You don't bring that into the wrestling ring. Yeah, right? there's nothing even there's nothing in this that even suggests that it's a work. She's straight up pounding the girl. No, I mean, she, 
it's not work. Obviously, you can tell it's, le- it's well, legit. Well, no, no, it's like, it, you can tell it's legit, yeah, but it's like, it's not even just like, oh, yeah, well, kind of. It's like, no. Yeah, there's, there's no close. no effort on her part to mask what she's doing. That's yeah. exactly what she's doing. So, yeah, this is the one of the most ultimate no-nos you can do in wrestling. And I, and I state to any um, up-and-coming wrestler that may listen to this podcast, if you're against the ring with someone that you fucking despise, that you want to kill, right... You do not do it inside that ring at very, you know, you know, you don't do it at all. But you don't do it inside the ring because it shames the entire industry. Yeah. Right? It means you piss on the legacy of every single other person who stepped in that ring. Every one of them. I I feel ashamed about this whole thing, and it makes the entire industry look bad. And I feel really bad for for you know Yusakawa, who was who was hurt in this whole thing. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I it. <sighs> This has really got me up in a rage, and I knew it would do, because I, this is just the... This is horrendous, guys. If you want to go look, like I said, Matt, you found the, the video pretty early, pretty easy. It's not yeah. hard to find. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> All you've got to do is write Japanese, Japanese female wrestler beaten. Yeah, and it comes straight <laughs> There up, you go. Yeah. <laughs> because it's been such big news. Um, and, you know, with some of the articles, I've, I, like I said, like I've... I've read about Yusakawa. It couldn't have happened to what seemed like a nicer girl, unfortunately. So, here we are. Yeah, there we go. Moving on. Lesnar walks out of Raw, unless you want to talk about anything about that, but I'd much rather move away from that. Yeah, I'm good with that. Fucking disgusting piece of, um, piece of garbage. I just don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Anyway, Lesnar uh, walks out in Raw. Uh, the, the reason I brought this stuff up um, is because, obviously, the news story had broke that Lesnar... Um, was due to appear and make an appearance at this week's Raw, and he declined, and he walked out. Now, yeah. with that news, tons, and I mean fucking tons of shit stories popped up. Apparently, he's, he left because Roman Reigns failed a drug test, which is untrue. Stories of him being pissed about not wanting to put Roman over. He thought he was wrestling with Brian. He'd be happy doing it for Brian, not for Roman. That's also untrue. Stories of him discovering life on the moon and breeding with fucking Martians... Obviously untrue, right? But it was like tons of You mean of that's stories. not true? Yeah, I know, right? Shocking, okay? No! Yeah. <laughs> no! With my Martian babies! Martian Lesnar babies, that's what I said. Aww. <laughs> but that's what it seemed like it was getting to at the point. Like, people... it's... it's just got ridiculous. Just speculation. It's like, oh, and then that was a complaint. And it's just like, oh. mm. And it's like, what was it? He complained that they didn't send... That he had to fly his own jet. It's like, that's not true. Yeah. WWE send a jet... Every time they want Lesnar. Yeah, because he's marquee talent. It's in his know. contract. Yeah. That, like, we want you, we will send the plane. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll roll out the red carpet sort of thing. Yeah. But the tons of fan, you know, really just fan, basically fan fiction about came out about him. Oh, he left because he was having a sex change in Denver. Like, I'm just making it up on the fly. But it would seem like stuff <laughs> was getting like that, you know? Like, oh, he was, he was, you know, he walked out of Raw because he wanted to pursue a career in crocheting. I, you know, and stuff like that. It was yeah, like, yeah. it was getting a little bit out of hand. The, apparently, the real story and the crux of the, of the matter was that Lesnar is unhappy the way that he's being, um, his brand is being used by WWE in terms of merchandising. Um, you know, his shirts and action figures are not being put ahead of the other talents at Mania, uh, and that seems to have angered the beast shall we say. Yeah. Um, that is far more believable than the other stories of apparently WWE trying to cover up drug tests about Roman Reigns. No. No, nah, I don't buy that. Um, so, the thing, here's the thing to talk about this, right? So let's get to the actual truth of the matter. Brock is pissed that he's not being utilised in terms of commercially, you know, in terms of yeah. merchandising. Yeah, because that's where, that's where the extra money comes from. Mm. And sometimes... And sometimes with merchandise, the most money. Yeah. We, you only have to listen to CM Punk's uh, podcast when he stated that he wants to stay heel, uh, a face because he wanted the merchandise money. Yeah. Um, you know, which is you know, understandable. Uh, I, I think that Lesnar obviously makes enough money you know, from his WWE contract, but he's one of these guys that he knows his worth and he's going to make WWE make sure that they uphold their part of the oh, They're willing to pay his worth, yeah. Now, let's talk about this. Have WWE made a misstep here? Because this is the big, this is the big talking point. A lot of people skip over this because they want to make their own stories. Let's talk about the truth of the matter. Let's talk about where this actually leads from here, about whether or not Lesnar's sticking with the company and whether or not WWE has fucked their only chance of keeping him there. Um, 
I think that more than likely this, I don't think Lesnar would have walked out. You know, him not being, his stuff not being used correctly would have pissed him off, obviously. But him walking out, I think, is a big telling point to the fact that, mate, more than likely, I don't think he's coming back. I think WrestleMania is his last date. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he goes off, does what he wants. I th- people say he's got unfinished business in UFC. I, you know, then probably be big pay-per-view money to be had to him going to UFC, so fair enough, whatever. And we're not here to state whether or not he would do well back in UFC. We're not... We've always said, even with the CM Punk stuff, that is not our area of expertise. No. But have WWE shot themselves in the foot? Well, here's where I'm a little bit off with this. Obviously, you know, he's pissed off with it. Maybe they didn't, you know, maybe they haven't been promoting him at all, right? Which is obviously the wrong thing. But if I were WWE, knowing that there's a chance that Lesnar's going, I would want to promote more the rising stars leading up to WrestleMania, you know? Trying to get yeah. the merchandise sales for them to get them more over. So I do get why they would have done it. But if they were so strongly thinking that there was a chance to get Lesnar, then they should have been placating the guy this close to the end of his contract. I mean, literally worshipping the ground. Thank you, Lesnar. Thank you, Brock. Thank you, Brock. And then we'll, you know, he'll be more inclined to give them a contract. Now, maybe they didn't yeah. want to... Here's the thing. Lesnar is the X factor here because we can't talk about the contract negotiations in the same fashion with anyone else because it doesn't apply to them. Because Brock is something special. He's so, the difference. Yeah, right? Not even, arguably, I know John could probably hold his own in terms of negotiating contracts, but he's always been so dedicated to the company, you know, it's not really a factor. Yeah. But with Lesnar, it's one of those things that he can make WWE sweat when it comes to contract negotiations. Because he knows he's worth top dollar. The stats state he's worth top dollar. Big box office attraction. That's he always it. does huge good work for them. You know, when he's on the show. So he can make WWE sweat when it comes to coming for new contracts. He can make them bend over backwards. And there ain't many guys, let's face it, you know, the Zack Riders and Justin Gabriels of this world. I know Gabriel's gone, obviously. You know, they ain't going to get what they can get. Yeah. yeah. Essentially, I'll take anything that WWE can give to me. Lesnar, you give him a shit contract, he'll take a shit on it and throw it back in your face and say, come back to me when you're willing to do business. So, yeah. Now, he shouldn't have walked out, of course, because that is, you know, I know we always said that about CM Punk, you know, I still don't think he should have walked out if he was booked to be on the show and advertised. Then he should have been on been on there and then done whatever he wanted to afterwards, you know. But this is yeah. Lesnar, we know how he how he operates, but it's still not right. Yeah, well, we had they had Heyman, so that's, you know. Yeah, yeah, like the rivalry's going to kick on, you know, it'll be fine. You got one without, the, you, can, you can have one without the other, as long as it's Paul, not Brock. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Brock on his own would just, I don't, that'd just be terrible. I think it'll be good, it's just he can't, like I said, um, he, he's, obviously he's not great. He, I, I think he's okay at promos, he's not okay being on his own doing promos. Yeah. Bro. He needs, he could do a good promo, but he needs Paul for the, as the hype man. You know, to begin with. Yeah, like, Brock's best work comes when he says everything with him has to be short and sweet and strong, right? Yeah. So, like, you know, when he said when he did that brilliant video package leading up to, like, his fight with Cena, he was like, I'm going to leave in a, in a pool of blood, like, sweat and piss or and urine. Yeah. Or, something like those. or, like, you know, it's going to get ugly people. Those sort of stuff is, like, what Brock is best at. Because when he says, I'm going to kick your ass, you know, there's a few people in WWE at the moment that you feel legitimately, wow, huh. <laughs> he could kick my ass. Yeah. Brock, you're like, actually, he could, and he could really hurt me, you know? Yeah. And it's not so much like, you know, if I were to get in a fight with some even the lowest guys, you know, I'd probably get my ass kicked. But it just doesn't feel that way because of the way they're portrayed, you know? But still. Uh, so what do you reckon? Brock signing? Brock not signing? It's tough. WWE's got to stick some something good on the table if they want to keep him on. Maybe too much on the yeah. table, you know, which is, I think, WWE's fair with it. I think him leaving out, uh, walking out, big indication, big indication. Yeah, and not in terms of. But I mean, if they're gonna go, if they're gonna go with a whole sort of like we'll still keep you around, but I, if he's gonna go like more money, less showings, then he can't be he can't be champion. No, he won't. Uh, yeah, oh, definitely not. Okay. The one thing they need to have learned after after this that um, the him having his championship run, I still think it did okay, um, but. They needed one more title defense in that three month run that he didn't do anything. Yeah, that's what they needed. But as you say, Matt, he, you know, we know Brock. He's going to ask for more money for less dates. That means he's going to be wrestling less. So he won't be doing Night of Champions and all that stuff. He will just be doing SummerSlam Mania. That's it. Yeah. yeah. 
Rey Mysterio is released. Finally, this saga can fucking end. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I was sick of hearing reports of apparently Mysterio's back on good terms with the company. Oh, he's in a bad mood this week with WWE because he's had his contract forcibly extended. Oh, but next week he's all up and ready to go. Ne- oh, no, now he's very annoyed with them. Were you sick of this as much as I was? I was actually just happy, just like, eh, Ray's gone. Good. Good, yeah. It's actually it's sort of terrible to sort of think of it in that sort of that sort of way. It's like about fucking time. Mm, mm. Oh, I'm with you. I, I, to be honest, these stories that just kept coming up, I was like, okay, we need a finality to this, you know? Yeah. Uh, to make all parties happy. So now he's gone. Um, I know he did have his his contract forcibly extended, and he wasn't happy with that because it meant more time out for him, and he wanted. I think he wanted to go elsewhere. Yeah, and I think that the whole situation is a shame because I think Ray is one of those guys that you probably want to pair up uh, down at NXT with a few guys to kind of uh, stay. Okay, you're a smaller dude. Here's how I got over. Here's how I got past these things. Here's how I wrestled the bigger guys. Could be really useful for them. But yeah, uh, that could work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, obviously, it didn't come to that point. A lot of people think you know we brought up Lucha Underground already. I think Lucha Underground would be a perfect fit for Mysterio. Oh, yeah, wrestling part time, not doing house shows, all TV based, and he could be brought in there like a huge. I know Alberto Del Rio, I think, made his debut there. You've already got the link there. You know, um, has he made his debut in Lucha? I think he has. Yeah, they've been referencing him at how very late. Yeah, That's what I heard last. So I'm only going that he debuted just because I'm thinking by timeline it should have happened by now. But I know they referenced him. So, yeah, not as Del Rio, but you know, as El, El Patron or something like that. You know, yeah, yeah Del Patron. Yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously Lucha Underground, you probably will likely go there. Like I said, best place for him to go. You know, won't be too taxing on the body. But if he's up for more wrestling, I imagine he's starved for it because we've barely seen him in the ring over the last two years. That's it. You know, if at all. I think his last match was the night after WrestleMania, the last WrestleMania. <laughs> Which is pretty telling. The last time I really remember him was when he was doing that sort of master and apprentice thing with Sin Cara. Mm. And that was with the original Sin Cara. Just to yeah. How long that, go, that, that, that was ago. Because, I mean, that guy's been fired for the fucking ages now. Botch Cara, shall we say. Um, so, yeah, there was actually one... Spanish meme, like, for... Mexican for you were eliminated. <laughs> it's funny that I, I saw... Um, like a meme stating it was like Sin Cara it's just like excellent <laughs> like you know like his his ultimate botch all along was to get Rey Mysterio fired from that company <laughs> so if that was the case mission has been uh, mission has been achieved I know there's a lot of big fans of Mysterio I'm a big fan of Mysterio it's just that we haven't seen him enough really to care um, yeah. so I'd love for him to go to Lucha Underground do great work for them um, I don't think he'll ever make WWE regret using him the way that they did because that's WWE there you know they're stubborn yeah. You know, in that sense. Yeah, regret. Uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, go do good work, get your payday, retire, and then I'll give you a round of applause. Later on, you know, ten years down the line, five years down the line, you'll get, you know, inducted to the Hall of Fame, and he's well deserving of it, personally. Oh, yeah. So. That's all the news for this week. Jesus Christ. I think that's the longest we've ever had the news section. How long have we been going on now? Oh, 40 geez, minutes? Well, yeah, nearly. About half an, yeah, about half hour. So, yeah, normally some weeks we just don't get any news. It was like, okay, fan feedback, so... Loads of news! Oh! Yeah, lots of interesting news to talk about in terms of that sense, so... Let's move on to our fan feedback, then. Um, We've got plenty of uh, fan questions to talk about, some very interesting questions. And I did save this week's, in my opinion, um, the best for last. So you can... uh, All of our fans that leave regular messages... They're all great, it's just there's one that I thought I really want to answer that, so I left that till last. First up is Robert Chapman. He asks, does Roman Reigns have a glass lip due to him bleeding so much from the mouth? Yeah, I noticed that as well, personally. Yeah. Um, I can always buy into the belief that he does. I think that maybe he's got a stiff upper lip, doesn't bleed, but his lower lip is more Ric Flair-esque. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, just busts just, open on its own accord. Bla- his lip just blades. His lip bl- it blades by itself, yeah. It's like that meme I saw, I saw which was um, like when Triple H pushed Ric Flair over. He was like, I pushed you! Why haven't you bladed him? Yeah, well, yeah. why aren't you like, bleeding like a, st- like a stunted pig? You know, just like... 
Uh, yeah, it's, you know, at, at the beginning with him bleeding, it actually was a pretty good visual because we don't get blood at all. But he busts open by his mouth so regularly, mm. you're just kind of expecting it. Now, oh, do you know one thing though? I recently heard a Jericho podcast with Michaels. Mm. There to blame. Really? No blood. Oh yeah, I yeah I know why. Yeah, they got they they were. A bit naughty. They got their wrists slapped in a big way, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. That's um. I do. I do remember that because they um. The they, eye, the bleeding eye, and just. It was. Uh, they were told not to bust open, and they did. Yeah. So. Uh, I think WWE would have gone that way eventually. It was Pete. It's PG now. You can't have people bleeding all over the place, especially yeah. not Ric Flair esque. You know, come on, that guy, <laughs> fucking hell! Like, no one bl- bladed like Ric Flair. Jesus Christ, he he must have had like transfusions after Flair. every match. You know, like okay, he's lost seventy five percent of his blood in five seconds after bleeding. Let's get some more fucking blood back into him. So yeah, that was crazy. No one will blade like like Ric Flair. Um, yeah, Roman Reigns. Yeah, does have a glass lip. Unfortunately, he he wouldn't make a good boxer. Let's just say that because he yeah. would be like blood all over the place. So, Alfie Young, who I believe is a new, um, not a new subscriber. I don't know, but a new commenter. You know, fan. You know, in terms of leaving messages. So oh, awesome. No. Jump along the train. First question that they have for us is why don't we have one million subscribers yet? We're getting there soon. Uh, we only have 999,750 to go, so, you know, I think we made a working good Working on it, okay? <laughs> working on it. We're doing as best we can, okay, to get those to get those subs. Um, and like I said, the majority of the subs that we get are from, you know, word of mouth, so share across. Get more people in. Be more happy. I'm kind of thinking we're just going to have to get a um, big um, Let's Talk Wrestling, like, sign when we go to Raw. <laughs> Yeah, we're, like, we're getting shirts for it, so... Well, yeah. Then that creeps up, I'm like, it's March, and we're going in April. It's to... not that far away, is it? I know. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be there soon. I'd be very interested to see if any of our fans have tickets. If you do have tickets, you know, leave a comment. We're not going to go searching anyone out, but you, more than likely you will see us, so... There you go. You can expose Matt's face for the world to see. On, you know, if we don't expose it, just like, just like LTW selfies... Well, shall we say we'll make a picture of ourselves at at, at Raw, so then people can see us there. They can match our faces to things. Shall we? Shall we say that right now that we're going to do that? That it'll happen. That it'll happen. It'll happen. And it'll be exclusive on the Twitter page. I won't put it on the video. So, cool. We, we'll make a a virtual handshake, shall we? Yep. Okay, it's done. There you go, guys. Something to be excited for. It's not hard, you, to be honest. People can find my face on on YouTube pretty easy. It's not that hard to find. Yours, not, but mine. Aha! <laughs> uh, he also asked as well as if we saw Rhino's debut to NXT. Yes, I did. Saw Brian Kendricks as well this week. Also, I think the um, the whole thing of bringing these former um, talent back into NXT is that it, they are coming back in advancement roles to work with talent that are hoping to get big. Because you know, come on, it's not as if they're going to put stock into Rhino or Brian Kendrick becoming you know draws for the company. You know, it just ain't going to happen. Otherwise, they would have been brought onto the main roster, of course. So I think yeah. it's perfect for them to come on NXT, work with some, um, you know, bring these experienced guys in, work with some talent, uh, make them better. Um, and trust me, as much as um, you know, the commentate, you know, commentators there state, oh, it's they're they're here to reboot their careers. They're not. They're there to help the careers of people around them, and that's fine to me. Shake yeah, things up. Who else do you think will be going in NXT time soon? <sighs> I don't know. I jumped that it's question tough. on you, didn't I? And I was like, I, I, don't... Uh, I've, like, I know WWE put up their whole little, like, oh, maybe it'll be Carlito. And I was like, no. no. Carlito won't be going. There was like a few, they were like listing off a couple, like 10 people that could possibly be going to NXT. And I was like, no. Mm, yeah. I can see people, you know, the likes of Rhino and Brian Kendrick are the likes of people that are going to go. They're not going to get huge stars to come in. Yeah. They're going to get, you know, what was at very most. Mid card talent, bring him in as a big shock factor and get him to work with a few people. Easy. Yeah. I like it. I think it's a great idea, personally. Gives these guys more legitimacy if they've beaten characters that are already known and these characters coming back, they get, you know, they go to the fucking Full Sail University and get cheered like they're heroes. Why not? Yeah. Why not do it? Awesome stuff. Um, 
Thomas Miller asks if WWE should have kept the number slash numerals after WrestleMania. The answer to this is, is actually quite easy. It all goes down to how pretty it looks in the logo that they have for that year. Yeah. Um, they will switch between 31, you know, you know, in terms of having the actual number, if they think they want it to look more futuristic, and they will go more, you know, they'll go for the numerals, you know. Wherever yeah, they're... like I think 31 will look better, like the actual digits three and one would look better than X, 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 I. Yeah. That's the way they look at it. You know, um, that that's, that's the general consensus of why they choose certain things is because, you know, it's more attractive to the eye to go one way or the other. Uh, they, they would just swap back. They've, they've done it loads of times. Oh, hell, even at 30, it made sense. Cause then you had like the big X's that you can make on your stage. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's you know you've got the three X's. I know it sounds like a WrestleMania the porno parody, but it's not exactly you know. But I mean, it's quite impactful, you know. But they will switch backwards and forwards depending on where they want to go. You know, so it's the bottom line of it. And sometimes it won't even be oh this Roman numeral looks sexy in this one. It's just how it fits with the logo of that year because they changed the logo. So that's, yeah. that's the way they go about it. Uh, Kane Saint Dennis asks now that Trish and Lita are in the Hall of Fame. What other women would you see in the Hall of Fame? There are two, and they're not in-ring talent that I would put in there. Would one be Miss Elizabeth? Yes, that's the first one, who should yep. be already be in there. I think she'll probably go in this year. Yeah. It's like alongside. She isn't. It makes sense to me. Apparently she isn't, though. But oh. It's a bit of a shame. But yeah, she should be in there. My second one may be one that I think a lot of people overlook, and someone that I really have a lot of respect for. Do you want to guess? Not in ring talent. It's not in ring talent. Not in ring talent. No. It's not going to be Vicky, is it? Nope. <laughs> um, You'll kick yourself. Lillian. It's Lillian. Yeah. I think Lillian Garcia deserves a induction into the Hall of Fame. I really do. Um, I think that uh, she doesn't get nearly enough props for the work that she's done for that company and how yeah. constant. I mean, I'm probably she's not. Yeah, at some point. I mean, because, hell, you've got Finks in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I get the feeling as well that, um, you know, the... In terms of in-ring talents, they're the two that I would say that really, you know, classy ladies, you know, that should go in there. I think Miss Elizabeth should it should already be it, ages ago. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, it would have made sense to put her in this year. That way you can remember her and... Randy Savage because they they were in tandem for a lot yeah, of parts. Yeah, they're hand in hand together. Yeah, yeah. In terms of in ring talent, um, you know maybe Sable. You know she was a huge star during the Attitude Era. She brought that sex appeal, and she was very well over Sable. You know during yeah. that time. Um, hell, that would make um, Brock happy at least. Uh, you got like sort of like Molly Holly and Ivory, which are like um, you know s- you know pillars of that division at times. You know especially yep. when the likes of Trish and Lita were you know just making their ascent, you know, these are women that could really go and you know, hold the line for them. So there may be some. Any Anyone else that you could think of? No. To be honest, like, you're actually quite shocked because you'd probably think I'd say Mickey James. But I, no, I don't know. I personally, here's his his controversial. I don't think Mickey James did enough and was there long no, enough. No, that's, that's why I'm not saying it. Mm. Um, no, I think I can't think of anything, anyone really. Mm. I would, I would. A lot of people may disagree with me about Lillian, but I honestly think that she's done enough and she's been there long enough that um, she she should be well deserving. I'll say. Yeah, I mean, she's been there for, for fucking ages, guys. And she's, come on, this is this is a a woman who broke the mold for female announcers in that company because there weren't any before her. So there you go. And she did always did it with one of the things I disliked about WWE is how they've constantly made jokes on in her expense. The whole horse face thing that keeps coming been up. There's loads and it's been terrible. That's very insulting. And I think she's a gorgeous woman who has a lot of talent. She's a great singer. She's done the anthems for them tons of times and done it to perfection every single time. That's it. So I've got no issue with... Um, like I said, not, not, I'm beyond not giving an issue about it. I think she should go in. Personally, classy lady. Yeah, I'd love, I'd no real to, doubt about it. I'd love to meet her one day because she's one of those people that you that you can just tell she's a very nice, approachable woman who takes her craft very seriously. So. Uh, but yeah, there's our thoughts on it. So five women we've named there. I, mean, I think Miss Elizabeth tops it though. Needs to go in. All oh, right. I know they've got like Medusa and stuff that she maybe should go in. Yeah, yeah. 
But, you know, the whole memorable thing of her dumping the title in the WWE. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I think I think she's got more of a chance to think of what people believe. But... I think there's a, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of things that need to be repaired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With that. I mean, there's worse been, worse been done to that company by more villainous people that have got into the Hall of Fame. Let's just yeah. say that. So. Uh, so, here we go. Last one. Bazooka Majin. He asked... First of all, he said, how poetic it would be if Ted DiBiase Jr. was the one who broke the streak, considering how, you know, Ted DiBiase Sr. brought The Undertaker into WWE. He then quickly says afterwards, but obviously he never got hot enough, nearly close to being hot enough, to be even think to challenge the streak, let alone beat it, right? So, right, yeah. he does make that fact, you know, of course. But then he questions, okay, and this isn't the question that a lot of people ask, so... You know, I thought that, and especially now, after after it's said and done, everyone's calmed down after the streak breaking. He asked the question that I think that a lot of podcasters don't answer when they state, we wouldn't have had Brock win the streak. Well then, who does break the streak? And it would have to seem legitimate, have to seem competitive. Who would be the man to break the streak if it wasn't going to be Brock Lesnar? I think it's a really good question, and one that yeah. doesn't get answered a lot, so... Especially this, this, you know, year on afterwards. Because, yeah, we, we made notes of, oh, we think this person should break the streak. But we were there pissed off that that, that it was dealt in in that manner. Oh, yeah. I think they've made the best of it going forward because Brock has done great work for them. But I still disagree with the way they did it. But So who do we think should have broken the streak in Brock's stead after all this time? I think it's a good question. I think, my ironically, considering he's about to face him, I think Bray Wyatt is an excellent choice. As a man to break the streak. Yeah, well, I'll put him as a definite, cho- definite choice. I think um, that we said at the time that we think that Roman Reigns would at least be in the talking to break the streak. I think with Wyatt, the way that he walks the tightrope between heel and face, I know he's predominantly heel, but if he were to break the streak, it doesn't matter how people react to him afterwards because if it's a, a heel response, fantastic. Run with it. If it's a face response, which I doubt it would have been, but if it's a face response and, you know, it's hugely been breaking the streak and everyone gets behind him, that's okay as well. You know, you can go either way. It's much easier to do that for him than it would be Roman Reigns, let's just say. Like, yeah. If they Roman Reigns break the streak, everyone boos him the day after, they're like, oh shit, we have to turn him heel. You know, they that that's a, you know, a couple of months of, of changing his psyche and his persona, you know, that they have to go down that route to do. Um... Another person that people overlook. I mean, we've got to think a year ago, The Shield was still together. So there's, there's a fact to think yep. about. But maybe Seth Rollins, considering how much of a high-profile talent he's become for that company. And he's the one doing the best. Even, you can say, oh, Roman Reigns is going to be winning the title at WrestleMania. He's going to win it before Rollins. I would state in terms of career, the, the rungs of their career, I think Rollins is higher. Like For what for amount achieved, yeah, definitely. He, I think he is already main event talent. Roman Reigns at yeah. the moment is currently... In a in a plan to make him an established main event talent. He's not there. R- Seth Rollins was main event talent back at fucking Hell in the Cell, right? Yeah. He's been there far longer to me. I think he's done the best work out of all of them. Even Dean Ambrose, right? I think Ambrose, our thoughts on him have been well documented. So, Josh, I still find it just bizarre because we were like, Seth, we're worried about... And I was like, oh, and Dean we should have been worried about all along. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Um... I will stand by what I said. I don't think they could... They, looking back at it now, not Roman Reigns. I wouldn't have given it to him. Too early in his career. Too much. Right? That would have been huge for him. Probably would have broke him. Right? Yeah. Him winning the streak. Just too much. Doesn't know how to react to everything that's going on around him. Seth Rollins. Yeah, I get that. It was an idea. But I just think as well that I like the way he's going at the moment. So that's okay. I would have stated Bray Wyatt should have been the man to break the streak. Especially going with the current sort of promos that Wyatt's c- kicking out now, it's sort of like it definitely proves that he could have been capable. Yeah, and it's almost like the passing of the torch from one dark character to another. Who can be exactly? Different. You know, the fact is that two thousand. You look back at two thousand fourteen. Let's have a look at this. Do you agree with me first, or do you want to add anyone into the mix before we go on? No. What could happen? You think Bray Wyatt as well? Yeah, I think it, it would have had. To, I think for the best person to have got the biggest push as a result of the win would have had to have been someone who'd had a stellar year. Yes, and he was looking great up to then. Yeah. And, you know, the the whole Wyatt family thing, like, hell, I'd have kept 
I'd have kept the Wyatt family together for the whole, like, leading up to it. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, yeah. Um, what The way I, I obviously, like said, so we said 2014 was not Bray Wyatt's year, and we yeah. stand by that, because he got in, he was in a rivalry with uh, John Cena, and come on, guys, John Cena did not put that guy over. No. The, the, the only time that, that Bray Wyatt won against John Cena, he needed tons of kids and the Wyatt family to beat him, right? It wasn't a clean victory at all. And it looked like he barely won then, right? That's it. So he came off with the Cena thing looking horrible. He just lost more matches after that. Then he went away, got himself rebooted. Um, so 2014 wasn't the year. If he had broken the streak, it all goes down to how they booked him afterwards, of course. But if he had broken the streak, man, that could have been 2014. We may not have named Seth Rollins the best wrestler of the year. We could have said that Bray Wyatt was the best wrestler of the year and best booked as well. Yeah, that could work. If they had carried it on and then he would have been unstoppable, maybe he got a stranglehold on people, you know, maybe, you know, we'll be looking at it now, even if he maybe eventually went face, we could be looking at Wyatt versus Lesnar, what's the one thing that can stay the beast, someone that's not even a man himself, you know, it's not man against beast as it has been all along, it's whatever the fuck Bray Wyatt is against Brock Lesnar, you know, Yeah. it could have been something along those lines, but we're millions of miles away from that, so, um, that's the way the way it goes now, but yeah. Bray Wyatt, that's my answer to that. Bray Wyatt should have been the man to break the streak. And I think his career would have been much better off for it, of course. So, um, But do you agree with what I say about Roman Reigns before we move on? That I think that it probably would have broke him. Yeah. Him breaking I don't, I, the streak I don't, early. He, would, he, wasn't, he wouldn't have been ready for it. He's barely he ready for it, it, the Lesnar match now. Yeah, well. Yeah. Um, but... The thing is, it's just sort of like to get that sort of the momentum or just even, oh, my God, they're putting that sort that amount of stock into me. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think I don't think he would have been ready. No, I think I like when I say the words broke him, I think it would have very adversely changed the way that he was going to go. And I don't think it would have been for the better. You know, I think that with all the attention and everything, he 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 doesn't quite know how what how to deal with the booze now imagine then if the crowd turned on him you know which they probably would have done if he had broken the streak eating taker yeah it would have been way worse than it than it is now i guarantee the guy would have no choice but to go heal and at that That's stage it. of his like, career if if that would happen he would have loved the crowd at raw rumble yeah you know we could have been looking at it now as roman reigns one of the biggest heels in the company and, you know, him winning the Royal Rumble, people booing and he'd be like, yeah, yeah, you know, acting like a heel. May have been like that. Who knows? It's all what ifs. And, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, Brock did break the streak. But, yeah. I think in unison. If anyone else, I think I'd like to see people's re- um, response. Who do you think, apart from Brock, should have won? Um, should have broken the streak? And I don't want to hear people going, oh, we don't think the streak I mean, we spoke about ended. this. We spoke about this, like, after last, May- after the May- after Mania, where it happened, which just sort of was like, kind of feels like a waste. Yeah, yeah. And we had the question last week if people are going to regret, um, I think it might have been, you know, you know, Bazooka himself, right? Who asked Mania us, season's upon us. <laughs> like, do, do do they regret, you know, them giving Lesnar the win? Giving them the win? And we said no, I don't think they do. But I think in five years' time they might, you know, so. But that's who I would have given to, Brett White. Shall we move on to our Raw review? Yeah, I think it's about time for it. It's nearly an hour. Yeah, yeah, we've had a plenty. Of, I th- that's what I I liked doing the notes for this episode. And the reason being is because it got a lot of ch- chat about lots of different stuff. Um, you know, I do like doing the raw review, but like it's like loads of different. Sometimes some some weeks we're like very focused on one particular topic, and we you know we we explore it. Here we've got like almost like a variety of different stuff that's coming on. You know, yeah. so I do, I, I, you know that's really, I was excited for this week's episode. So. Anyway, raw review. Let's get into that. Don't want this to end up being like a two and a half hour podcast. <laughs> we are one night removed from the uh, mediocre I'd state fast lane event. It wasn't bad, guys, but it wasn't also fantastic. Yeah, mediocre, and that's what it means. I still stand with my better than Raw, worse than a pay per view. Yes, it's in that in limbo, shall we say? Yeah, uh, shall we say? Uh, we are on the track now for WrestleMania 31, and uh, the card is shaping up. You know the way it's going to be. I, you know, people can argue for better or for worse. We'll state that when it comes time for our predictions of WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, Orton returned at um, at Fastlane. Undertaker was called out as well, so that's you know a big rivalry going on. And uh, the Roman Reigns and Lesnar match, as you've already obviously heard us talking about, is a lock. That's going to happen yeah. now. Um, and this uh, week's episode emanated from Nashville, Tennessee. 
the home of the home of country music. You know, so they made plenty of references towards that throughout the show. Oh god, yeah, they loved it. Mm. Randy Orton kicked off this week's show. He sported one hell of a sexy new shirt. I do like that shirt. Mm. If, that's, if that's on sale, actually, when we go to uh, the O2 on the television, you know what you're buying. <laughs> I, I might buy something else, but it's definitely in the thoughts. It's definitely yeah. In the thoughts, you know? It does look sexy. He says that uh, he's not the kind of person that has 20 minute monologues, but that's fine. The authorities around they'll probably do that for him. That's okay. Uh, not that we want that, of course. That's it. I don't do loads of speaking. That's all right. <laughs> Bow down to the game. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Someone else who does all the speaking. <laughs> See, that's not the role he needs to fill because that's definitely they've got more than people willing to do twenty-minute monologues to open up this fucking show. So still, uh, he reminds us of the really, I thought, fantastic write-off segment where he got his head stomped in. Yeah, I, I almost forgot about it. Oh, <laughs> I love that segment. I had forgotten about it. Yeah. I thought, I thought that segment was brilliant, though, the way they wrote him off. I thought Triple H's part in it was fantastic. The conflict between him. They very rarely do it where characters are feeling one way, and but they have to do another. It's very yeah. clean cut in wrestling. I like the way they did it. it for once, it was executed really well. So um, He stops talking, of which we also appreciate, and then he calls out Rollins to fight because he's pissed off. And uh, obviously we said, no, Orton isn't going to do a 20-minute monologue. So that comes out comes the authority to fill that void. Stephanie says he uh, she wants Orton back in the authority. Orton, initially, he's having none of it. He said, I'd rather kick some ass than kiss some ass. We've heard that line in wrestling tons and tons and tons yep. over the time. Um, Orton, by the way, was over big time with this crowd. They fucking loved him. At the very least, here. Um... They, you know, will pop in for everything that the guy said, you know. Probably the biggest face response he's had in in a, in a few years. In a while, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we know he's been feel for ages, but you get what we're saying, you know. Yeah, along, along those lines. Uh, then, after all this, when I thought, okay, they might be wrapping up the segment. No, it keeps going on because the man of a thousand turns grabs the microphone. We all know him as the... <laughs> oh, <Mitchell>. great. He <laughs> wants to talk. <laughs> He's saying joining the authority was the best decision he ever made, blah, blah, blah. Even though you've got to remember that the guy already had an ironclad contract, so this is kind of irrelevant, you know. <laughs> oh, my job was it was, was on the line. You have an ironclad contract. You know, that whole John Laurinaitis thing. Yeah. Do we not remember people power? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess most people have tried to forget, so I guess they're trying to get away with that, I guess. Stephanie says that Orton has done some horrible things, including horrible things to her family and to herself. And, of course, the movie he just starred in was a horrible... No, we don't know that. Do you know the one thing I loved is the fact that she was like, and it's things I can't even show. And I was like, that's true. Yeah, like, was it like her, him beating, like, RKOing her and kissing her while she was unconscious or that sort Whilst of stuff? Whilst Triple H was handcuffed to the ring post, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still, that might have been less of a thing than making her watch the new movie he just did, you know. That's true. Don't know yet. Don't well, if anything else, it might have just been gone for the whole sort of like Randy Orton's like the pre like the predecessor to Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> it's like it's abusive and it's tied up. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, he's a visionary in that sense, you know. Um, God, um, <laughs> I did have a joke there, but just the idea of Randy Orton being the next star of Fifty Shades of Grey just doesn't. Oh, he's like a viper in the bedroom. <laughs> Unleash the viper <laughs> upon her. No. <laughs> We're going down a shameless shameful paper, paper view plot. View plot. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting there already. We're getting there already. She's all, apparently, though, Steph is willing to overlook all of that as long as he comes back to the authority. Then they all give him a moment to think. Orton then calls him back and says, You know what? I will do business with you backstage. Now, it wasn't a particularly long o- opening segment, so I can't blast the segment itself. Fair enough. And, you know, it was okay. My issue with this is that obviously it's going to be Rollins and Orton at Mania. We know that, right? Yeah. I would argue that they're overcomplicating this storyline with how it went on throughout the show. Because it does eventually lead up, and we'll talk about it as it gets there, but it does eventually lead up to Orton rejoining the Authority. And it's not like a one-night thing where he's fooling them, then later on in the night he gets away with them. It's going to carry on into next week. Yeah. I think that's overcomplicating it. I think 
it's very easy and very good to book a revenge a revenge program with Orton wanting to get his hands on Orton. As we know that or, or that no, sorry, Orton wanted to get his hands on Rollins. I was I was wondering if you'd picked up on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Um, we know Rollins can play that role of trying to get away from someone. He did it fantastically with Ambrose, so he could do it here with Orton. You know, it's not a problem. You know, running away, not trying to fight him, getting, you know, you know, making a fool of all this time, not wanting to fight him, but then forced to at WrestleMania. Um, but it looks like they're going along the lines here of they're going to try and make it so Orton is, is being sneaky and then maybe like, you know, a couple of weeks before Mania and then he'll show his true colours. I think they're overcomplicating it. Let the guy get big face responses leading up into WrestleMania. Um, yeah, it's going to work. It yeah. should work. Yeah, it's easy and it works. I think there's a risk of WWE making this, um, making the reaction to Orton, you know, less of an impact because of the way that they choose him to go around the story. I think there is a risk that can be done now. I don't think he's getting any... The fact is, I don't think that going the route that they're going is going to get Orton a bigger cheer and a bigger response when he goes to WrestleMania. So yeah. why would you take the risk? You know, in that sense. You know, so you're going to earn yourself nothing, yeah. Risk and reward. You know, there isn't that much to be get. To, to get from it, but you're risking a lot, you know, it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. You know, you know. But they are teasing it anyway, and it will be Orton against Rollins, so we can expect that happening in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Barrett versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, we remember having um, Barrett and Ziggler last year as one of the matches on Raw of the year, because they had a phenomenal match between each other, if you remember. I do, yeah. I think that was back before Barrett got injured. You know, it was out for ages, so... Uh... I'm pretty, they haven't had a good yeah. match. Yeah. Barrett's just been losing tons of matches afterwards. He hasn't had a phenomenal match since he returned, so it must be before. But bad news, Barrett is out. He cuts a promo, uh, which, of course, we'd love to hear, but half of it is taken up by the ad break, so it just shows how much management care about giving oh, it. It's just ridiculous. And so it's just like, eh, any feedback? Oh, and he's halfway through a promo that I have no idea. And then like, I stops. kind of gather what he's on about. He's champion and he hasn't got his belt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just shows how much they trust you know their mid-card talent to do a promo you know to just add break over it you know yeah. not exactly uh, ideal if i were barrett i'd be a little bit pissed to be honest. I, i'd be very pissed honestly. yeah but there we are our truth is at ringside because apparently he beats barrett in a non-title match which um apparently half the roster has at this point so there we are but come on our truth for the intercontinental championship i've barely seen the guy since he broke bo dallas's streak which was Fucking ages ago, by the way. Last year, yeah. We uh, That's the last time I remember seeing Archie. Probably he's been on here and there, but I can't remember seeing him. But apparently now he's IC champ material. So, there we go. Um, I So he wants everyone then to tweet him, stating, oh, can I get a uh, an IC title shot? They want to tweet, what was it? Give truth a chance. Tell me, Matt. Did you tw- tweet, give truth a chance? Hell no. Fantastic. Well done. I'd like to shake your hand. Um, you resisted whatever urge there was. Well, apparently enough people did that this trended, number one. There obviously wasn't that much going on in the world at that point, shall we say. Yeah. <laughs> it was a quiet hour. Yeah, must have been. What a gigantic waste of time. I just, I, that's why I stay away from Twitter. I just don't understand the randomness of that beast. That's why you deal with it, Matt. Because I, just don't, I, I just don't know. Um, he, Truth also tries to state... And I'm going to disprove our truth. He tries to state that even Barrett's own countrymen don't like him. Matt, do you yeah, like Wade Barrett? Yeah, back to the fucking Rooney thing. Do you like Wade Barrett, though? Huh? Do you like Wade Barrett? I like Wade Barrett. Okay, I like Wade Barrett. I'm wearing a Afraid I Have Some Bad News wristband now. Yeah, exactly. I, I love Wade Barrett. I think he's great. Yeah. yeah. You ask any Englishman, even Wayne Rooney, who apparently he's been in a Twitter war with, you know, which is only like hard at best, do you like Wade Barrett? They will say yes. Honestly. Say so I tell you what, R-Truth, if you really want to, you know, you really want to get this argument over to us, come over to the UK and ask them in a crowd, do you like Bad News Barrett? And prepare for the tirade of yes. You'll get more yes chance than Daniel Bryan will get that night. Yeah. So, there we go. It, it takes a lot for our truth If anyone can understand, by the way. I did like our truth on commentary, hence why I'm talking about it. Um... It takes a lot for someone to be as annoying and nonsensical as Booker T is on commentary. Truth has achieved it. Fantastic. Oh, God, yeah, it was terrible. He was awful. 
<laughs> and we look back at Brian on the mic last week, who was fantastic. Awesome. Probably the best on commentary stuff I've heard in, in months. And then we get this. <laughs> the week after. He was shit. Really bad. So... That's why there was some moments where he's just trying to talk about something. It's like, what's he was going on about? Like, I'm going to kick your dog. It's like, yeah, why like, what, are you what, what, talking about a dog? He's not. He's not even the where character now. Who come into this? He doesn't even play the character now. That's a little bit unhinged. You know, who's seeing little Jimmy's everywhere. He doesn't even play that character anymore. So why is he talking like a fucking idiot? That's like, it. Seriously. If you're gonna do it, I'm gonna kick your dog. If you want more nonsensical no. chatter, then by all means, hashtag give truth a chance, but I certainly won't. Yeah. I don't want any more of the guy. I will pass on that. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, Ziggler then beats Barrett, because, you know, at this point, who hasn't beaten Barrett as the IC champion? Uh, Matt it. probably fell over and pinned Wade Barrett. I think I did. I think I managed it somehow. Oh, sorry, I'm leading on Wade Barrett now. I just pinned him. Oh, sorry, guys. Oh, now I'm eligible for a title shot. Oh, looks like I'm going to be at WrestleMania. Sorry. I I didn't even realise I was there. Uh, It's going to be 32,000 people in in WrestleMania in a ladder match for the IC title. I'll be one of those guys. Who knows? Even with a broken leg, I might pin Barrett again. Everyone can pin Barrett as the IC champion. Whoever wins the IC champion, by the way, that makes you very prone to losing matches. That's just the way it is. You just lose a ton of fucking matches. So, the way it is. Um, I thought the actual action in the ring was actually pretty good between Ziggler and Barrett, as they usually do. And uh, now they're going to have this big ladder match, which apparently will even involve Daniel Bryan. Which I yeah. Think is very odd. But still, once that makes that a little bit more official, I will uh, we'll reference that because I think next week they will announce that he'll be a part of that. So. So yeah, our truth on commentary, no, no, no. And I'm surprised they gave the guy time because he was shit on this commentary. Uh, and that whole, he was way more, uh, he was made way more interesting when he was doing the little Jimmy stuff. Now he's back doing nothing and the what's up. I'm just pretty bored of him again, to be honest. So, Or oh, better still, ooh, there it is. Oh God. I don't know why he's doing that. It's like, Jesus, that's old. He's doing that to annoy me. Really? Yeah. yeah. You're not a fan? No. Fan. No. Not a fan of the song? No. 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 Ooh. Oh, no. Sorry. No, I like the song, right? I dislike his use of it. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So, there we are. So, that's another thing that I can annoy you with. Oh, God. <laughs> People are going to start stating Tony's so racist because he hates the New Day and he hates our truth. <laughs> he hates our truth and the New Day. Oh, dear. <laughs> Well, maybe if WWE starts booking black people a little bit better, then maybe I will stop I loved Booker T when he was in the ring. On commentary, he's, fu- he's fucking awful. But there's a plenty, plenty of black wrestlers I've liked. Bobby Lashley, by the way, for, for people asking. I know he's not in WWE, but I like Bobby Lashley. I think he's great. I think the guy is a monster. And I think that it was a bit of a shame that he wasn't used more in WWE. Yeah. So I do like black wrestlers. It's just that, you know, the way that they're being used at the moment, they're either stale or fucking annoying. Let's just get... You know, what is it? What is it that um, in the new day that um, Big E likes to say? He's like, "Oh yes, sir," and it's like, does anyone really want to listen to that? Really? Yeah, it's um, like the, probably the one part of it that I hated the most was "Oh, laddie, daddy." It's like, <laughs> what? Oh my god, that's that was painful. That really was. But still, there we are. Feel the power in your body. <laughs> Oh no! Do you feel the power in your body after hearing that, Matt? I, 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 I feel like I want to take a bowel movement. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, the, mother, that's the power. That's the power. Backstage, just move on. Backstage, the authority. Of, we we go on fucking weird tangents, you and me sometimes. <laughs> Backstage, the authority are with Randy Orton. Rollins says he can't believe that they're going to bring Orton back. And, you know, he doesn't really say it in that much of a bad way. But Stephanie fucking goes mental. She says, how dare you be disrespectful? Are you doing it just because I'm a woman? I'm like, where did you get that from? Hey, he Christ. interrupted her. Like, that's... Yeah, but he never said, I'm interrupting you because you're a woman. That's like okay. Steph's... Like... Bitch, shut up. <laughs> I disagree with this because, as we know, Seth loves the ladies. Maybe a bit too much, but he loves the ladies. Enough to get okay? himself in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, he loves women, right? Exactly. It's, uh, not like, it's not like he just put his hand in front of her face and go, shh, the men are speaking. Yeah, he's like, come on, I know she gets, I know she got pissed off with Dusty Rhodes doing it, but come on, it's not exactly you're, dust, you're, talking, you're dealing with Dusty, though, to be fair. Mm. You're talking to something of a very different generation. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, for some reason here, either Stephanie's just on, you know, on her time just of the tripping. month. <laughs> you know, maybe just a little bit more angry as usual. Kane doubles the notion, and it's, and he gets a very he gets a media he gets a you know the Stephanie PMS treatment light, shall we say? Back at that, and then afterwards, they basically say, "Oh, Orton does rejoin the authority." Uh, Stephanie sets up Orton Rollins against Brian and Reigns for the main event, and uh, as I said, I stand by my thoughts earlier. I think it will dilute Orton's face resp- uh, response for the big moments of this rivalry. But there we go. Yeah. Prime time players against the Ascension. Hmm. You, me, Matt said last week that uh, we do not care for the prime time players this time around because they're both booked as nothings, right? Yeah. Um, and I feel like I need to state to people that don't get me wrong. Me and Matt fucking love the prime time players. We really do. Me and Matt have done the million millions of dollars dance many a time. We mark do we out. Have, for that. Yes. And there's anything wrong about marking out, by the way. That's the... I, I always find that when people go, oh, you're marking out. Yeah, damn right I'm marking out because I enjoy what's happening at the moment. Can I not get... <laughs> Sorry, to... I'm a fan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm allowed to mark out, you know, when, when I enjoy what's going on. So, but still, I, I still find it excited. Even despite the finish of this match, it's hard to get excited about the primetime players because I just don't believe that WWE has any stock in them. I think they're throwing them together... I think it's to play a Kate Darren Young after their their handling of the Dubai stuff. I really do. It was, it was way too much it's like, of a we'll coincidence. Stick you on, like, we'll, we'll give you matches. Yeah, it was way too much of a coincidence that this guy goes on this Twitter rant. Rightfully, we 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 said he should have. You know, we were all on Darren Young's side with all that. Yeah. Um, and then literally WWE sweep under the rug. The next week he's on Raw. Right? It does seem a little bit of a coincidence. I very much doubt that Dan, Darren Young would have been on the show if he hadn't made those statements. So there we go. Uh, yeah, but here we go, as I said, despite the finish, because primetime players beat the Ascension. It's their first loss. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I do see that the Ascension eventually getting the comprehensive victory over the primetime players, and then I think we'll get... We see as much of the primetime players as we do Los Matadores. That's the way I see things going. Would you agree? Yeah, it's definitely going to probably going to turn out that way. It's like, oh no, Titus O'Neil. <laughs> <laughs> the guy the, cares about Titus O'Neil. We've got to remember that they wanted to book Titus O'Neil as breaking Santino's record in the Royal Rumble. That's how highly they think of the guy, and it was only a botch on on his part that fucked that up. You know, I don't think you're going to have anyone beat Santino because, like, it was a dead sort of. One second. I don't think you can get any faster, right? Yeah, but you know, WWE probably would have booked it that way, you know. They would, you know like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, look at the clock timer. Whoa. Oh, well. uh, so, you know, our thoughts on them are like, you know, they brought Darren Young back and they've had the guy ready for ages. They just never wanted to bring him back. It's just a shame. It really is. But they get the shock victory. At least it's something for the guys. At least it's something. But um, I think it's WWE placating them as much as anything else. Roman Reigns is out. He cuts a promo. He narrates what happened over the last two months for us. Because as we know, if you're, you know, talent there, you have to tell us what happened because they're not confident enough that people are there to watch it. No, nah, that's it. I mean, I just forgetful. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, 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 I can't even remember what we talked about five seconds ago. So, to, lo, last week, Lordy Dottie. <laughs> that's Lordy Dottie. <laughs> Nobody. See, look, like, it's not even me this time. Well, yeah, you yeah, hate yeah, it yeah. when I do it. <laughs> I know, I'm a glutton for my own punishment at times. <laughs> when I've got a chance to give a little, little sliver of comedy, then I just have to flitter in. <laughs> Even against my own wishes. That's the way we do things. So, um, so he says before Fastlane, he felt like the fat. Oh, sorry. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. He's talking about Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan comes out. Daniel Bryan says before Fastlane, he felt like the fans booing Roman Reigns and being his biggest doubter. Um, his promo here, Bryan, over the last like two weeks has been like some of the best mic work he's ever done. Yeah, I know. Jesus, what got into what happened? <laughs> One thing I always said about Bryan is that his mic work was the the weak link in his trifecta. You know. Well, I guess he did have nine months off. Yeah, obviously he's been practicing because he's a much better put a promo now than he was. Let's just say that. Um, but yeah, he comes off here. He's going here. He says, uh, he's explaining that um, he's seen guys bigger and as powerful as Roman Reigns coming into WWE and they lack heart. They don't get anywhere. He says he doesn't regret losing a fast lane because Reigns has more heart than he thought. And now he has respect for him. And he congratulates him for winning the match. Aww. 
Aww. Yeah. He basically puts over Reigns big time. Yeah. Him, essentially. Um, which may some people may disagree with, but listen, it's Brian. I very much doubt that Brian has much of an issue putting Robert Reigns over. You know, I, you know, with this storyline, yeah, um, Daniel Bryan has finally got respect for him. I think Dan, Daniel. I mean, Bryan, hell, anyone who's seen the uh, WWE 24 of WrestleMania 30, he's like Daniel Bryan spends like most of the day just going, I still can't believe this is actually happening. Yeah. But like the fact is that these guys have been in the wars before Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. They worked together before, right? Yeah. They had the, a match of the year before, right? Indeed. With uh, Team Hell No and Ryback right against the Shield. Yeah. So, you know, this isn't the first time these guys have battered each other before. So, you know, I think that Daniel Bryan. If we were to ask Daniel Bryan, of course he's going to say, "Well, I want to obviously be in the main event." But do you think he looks at Roman Reigns as being this bad guy? No, of course not. No. Not the way it goes. Um, so then he leaves saying oh, I've got uh, he congratulates him leaves and tells him to kick Brock Lesnar's ass and um, I tell you what we can look five years into the future when Reigns is a big star he's basically the John Cena at that point you know and I tell you what at, throughout all of his career if that is the case with Roman Reigns any interview he does about the birthing of his career he will have to he will have to state Daniel Bryan was the guy that helped me launch my career yeah Daniel Bryan has done more for Roman Reigns in the last month than Brock Lesnar will do, right? And that that's being honest, right? Mm-hmm. Daniel Bryan has made him more of a main event attraction, and look more main event than any, anyone else has ever done for Roman Reigns. I think Roman Reigns will have to be very appreciative for the work that Bryan has done making him look good. Yeah. Okay? That's that's what I would say. So any, I tell you what, if Roman Reigns comes out and he says, "Oh, you know, working with like Triple H made me a better guy," you know that's all corporate bullshit. If he says working with Daniel Bryan made me a big star, then he's telling the truth. I don't know it. Yeah. So after Bryan leaves, Heyman comes out. Obviously, with Les not being there, they have to have some sort of person there, and Heyman's obviously there to do it. And we go from one good promo. To another good promo, back to yeah. back. I did like this segment; it was very good, and most of it was because you know you've got Reigns there, who still isn't a good promo. Let's just be honest, but he's got a lot of people cutting good promos on him. You know, yeah, cool. I, the thing is, like, we'll get to it, but I don't think he did a bad job. I think it was with a, Heyman. I think it was good, right? Personally, yeah. yeah. We, we've slammed him before for doing shit promos. We can only see it the way we see it, and I thought he was fine here, honestly. I thought he was fine the night after uh, Royal Rumble with that yeah. thing. With you know, it's, some people may find try and poke holes in it, but you got to call it as you see. It. If it's good, enjoy it. Don't try and fight it. It's not know? a sniveling pile of suck up suck attack. Yeah, so come I'm on. not going to complain. We know it can get worse, you know. So yeah, uh, Heyman comes out and he um, states that uh, oh, I congratulate him on his victory, saying his money would have always been on Roman Reigns. He says, even against people of the past, like Sam Martino, Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, Austin Rock, Triple H, and Cena, all in their prime, he would put his money on Roman Reigns. And this gets actually a lot of heat from the crowd. I don't think that was his, yeah. his intended response. But he says that Reigns is the... I love this line. Reigns is the right guy at the right place, but at the wrong time. Or something along those lines, you know? Yeah. Um, so he says that um, as... Uh, you know, the fact is that he could be any of those guys, but they were men. He's not fighting a man, he's fighting a beast. His beast, is what he says um, in his promo with Heyman here. Man, I tell you what, if Heyman could carry over his promo ability into baseball, he would be the home run king. He'd be knocking those fuckers out of the park, night in, night out. God, yeah, easily. <laughs> you know what I mean? The guy is It's just sort of like, gifted. Heyman's got the mic. Good things are coming. Mm. Very rarely do we get a Paul Heyman promo that does not Deliver. Know, yeah. Deliver, yeah. It's, it's, it's a rare occurrence. Almost as rare as a United States title defence, really. Ooh. <laughs> I, I Can't know. say that. We had one the other night. <laughs> I know, but yeah, you get me, you get me. <laughs> um, so, Reigns at the end, as we say, gets closer to him and says, all this just gives him more motivation. And he, as we said, works up a good promo, you know. Um, I think the build-up so far, at the very least for this week, you know, as a start, it's okay. It's all yeah. right. They need Lesnar to be around, though, really, um, to build us up as a huge prize fight and really make Roman Reigns look strong. <laughs> it's the yeah. ideal part of it. Tag team titles, then. 
rematch for from Fastlane for the belts. Usos against Cesaro and Kid. Um, yeah. Now I'm going to move past the whole thing of I thought they were too soon. I still think that, but I think we've we've already spoken about that. And it's I think JBL needs to stop referring to them as one of the best tag teams of the year. Yes, like. Is that like one of the greatest tag teams ever? It's like, really? <laughs> but let's look at it now, right? They're obviously going to be a tag team that at very least WWE has some time for. So if that is the case, they need, their presentation needs to be addressed, and quickly. All right? First of all, they're coming out to Cesaro's music. That's a fucking fail right there. Because his music is the worst on, in, yeah, in WWE. Yeah, I'd rather they come out to kids. Yeah, kids is alright. I like kids. right? I think that's fine. Um, I think that the whole thing of having the towel over Cesaro's head, I never liked it. They need to get rid of it now because it just doesn't look right next to Kid anyway, right? Yeah. You know, maybe give Cesaro one of the hoods or something like that. I don't want him to assimilate into Kid's gear, but at least give them something that's roughly the same. They could you know? both have Beats headphones. Yeah, or something. <laughs> Which apparently they did on SmackDown. Oh, well, there you go. You know, it's going along those lines. But the fact is, if they're your tag team champions, their entire presentation needs to be addressed because it's all off at the moment. At the moment, you it looks as if they're not a tag team they're two random guys that you spare together they don't know how to mesh properly except for in the ring you know oh no it's well. santino and kozlov all over again but even then i say santino and kozlov they made it work they haven't currently made cesaro and kid look as if they're a tag team yeah know? that's the the main the main problem there so now i think that michael cole was listening to our show because as the commentators are again arguing about bringing your women your women to the ring, Michael Cole then mentions, well, hold on, Booker T, you had Charmel. He didn't say that the first time. I guarantee you that. And then we said it on our show. Maybe maybe we have Michael Cole sifting through our audience. There's listeners out there. <laughs> mm. um, so, I don't know about you, Matt. I found the camera work at some point of Raw, and this match particularly, was quite shoddy. Yeah, I thought it was just sort of like this. That's that's not where like the action is. Mm. That's the, just kids stared in the corner, just doing nothing. There was another bit later on that they showed a, a camera angle that was like backstage, and it was looking at a wall or something. And then they during very quickly got it. Rusev and Lana, yeah, yeah, just it, like racking. Yeah, it's like cool. You would think. I mean, yeah, people make mistakes, but obviously these were two mistakes, right? Not two mistakes. Was, I think the overall camera work on this match was shoddy. Just overall. I think tons of times they were like getting into wrong angles. They were, you know, cutting to cameras that didn't give a good shots, and it was just a bit odd, you know, because the rest of the show yeah. was fine. But yeah, just a bit odd here that the way they went about this. And you know, WWE, all their production values ha- are normally top notch. That's why it shows up this way. So, um, but I don't see it becoming a, a normal thing. It was just quite odd to see. The action, however, in this match of what we could see was pretty decent. Uh, yep. Natalia gets the champions DQ'd, but I and I'll tell you what here. There's a few things that go on with Natalia and Kid and the stuff that they do that I disagree with the way that it's perceived, because I find that yeah she's only just responding to Naomi's interference. And people might argue, oh Naomi knocked you know Kid's feet off the thing because it was illegal. I don't care if it's illegal. Leave that down to the referee. Yeah, that's the way yeah. I look at it. You're still interfering. Yeah, there's in still, still an interfering, and in, she's still interfering. In an active match. It's not like Jay came along and knocked his feet off. That would make sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, uh, oh, oh, Natalia's completely in the wrong. It's like, no, not in my eyes, she's not. That's Maybe I look at it differently. I think it's interesting to see how they try and perceive it sometimes. It just doesn't come over to me that well. But, but to be fair, if we get a Naomi-Natalia match out of it, I don't mind. I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to do a, a multi, you know, six... A against... six-man a six mixed-gender match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the way I think. Probably for the belts as well. And then maybe they'll do a storyline where Natalia loses the belts by getting pinned, you know? Maybe they're going along that story and it builds up. You know, they love the Tyson Kid Natalia heat against each other and stuff like that, you know? so Oh, yeah, because Total Divas infects rule. Exactly. Apparently now it's infecting our tag team division. So congratulations. It's getting further. Fuck me. It's spreading. Oh, oh guys. <laughs> you thought we were going to rant about Divas earlier on in that abomination. That's still worse. You've got one later on the show that me and Matt are going to go fucking ballistic with. Get ready. Get ready. So, uh, Backstage, Miz is pissed that his jacket has lint on it. How dare it have lint on it? <laughs> Miz Dow, dirty. Yeah, <laughs> essentially. He announces that he'll be entering the Andre the, uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Miz Dow then uh, states that since he's been fired as a, um, a stage, you know, a, a stuntman, he's uh, been approached 
for uh, commercials now on yeah. his own. And then Miz does the the thing of where he's faking being happy and kind of leaves it at that. I see Miz now winning the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I do see him winning it. And, and to beat Miz. Yeah, Miz will be like... Um, yeah, I think Miz will probably be the last guy that gets eliminated. Maybe they do a thing where Miz is trying to tell him to go over the rope and then that's the the, the final push, you know, that makes Sand out like, no, I'm taking this for myself. And then he does what he does. Yeah, that's it. Um, like, as much as I'm worried for Miz now after the breakup, the actual moment where it happens is going to be pretty decent television. I'm going to enjoy that. So, you know, they've been building up to it. And, you know, we can worry about Miz now after this happens. But that moment will be awesome. It will be really good. And, you know, one thing as well, because Miz will sell it like a million dollars. You know, he, yeah. he's done it before. The guy managed to get people to cheer for Alex Riley. That, that is true, actually. That's pretty, you know... That's... that's uh... <laughs> yeah and then look what happened to Riley so let's not <laughs> yeah, oh dear not wow both with the same brush that's 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 a that's a scary omen that we've painted for them right there yeah. still. um then they air a really cool video package showing uh Wyatt's promo at Fastlane mixed with tons of like footage from his vignettes and you know um footage from Taker and stuff like that I yeah. thought it was really well done then this leads to Wyatt appearing backstage with a casket. He says that the moment the streak was broken, uh, Taker himself was also broken. He alludes as well to himself being the one to make Taker finally burn. Yeah. I thought it was a good promo myself. Um, however, rumour is, Undertaker would not be appearing until WrestleMania itself. <sighs> that is a gigantic shame. Yeah. And it's not as if... I hope they're just doing it just to keep, like... Keep off the scent of it. Yeah, I, I the thing is with, with it, though, is that you have to ask why they might be doing this. Maybe they still don't know whether Take is going to be good enough for Mania yet. I mean, sometimes it does come down to it, you know. And they're doing this so, you know, they've not actually stated that Undertaker will arrive at WrestleMania. They're just, he's, he's going to get called out at WrestleMania. It may not even be a match. We don't know. They probably will be, you know. I'm, cl- I'm clasping at straws here, really. But... Um, why is good enough to sell this match on his own, but it is a gigantic, a gargantuan task to do on his own. And it will always be better if Undertaker was around. Let's just be truthful, right? So he can sell this rivalry, but it will be better with Undertaker around. But obviously, we, we've heard nothing to the contrary, uh, con- you know, the contrary stating that he's going to only appear at WrestleMania. He's not going to be at any of the shows beforehand. No, I know. So... It's just shocking, though. It's just like, oh, but I want it. A pretty huge indication that Undertaker just isn't up for it, you know? Yeah. I mean, like I said, they want to come back next year and do Sting versus Taker. I tell you what, Sting maybe, maybe has got two. Taker looks like he's barely got a match left in him. No, I know. You know, he's got he's, he's had a year since last year, and he doesn't look good, guys. Let's just be honest. Um, and nor should he, to be honest. You know, people go, "That's very disrespectful." He, guys, he's he's getting on a bit, and he's been in that. He's been in wrestling for fucking years. If his body wasn't good enough to wrestle, that's completely understandable, right? It really yeah. is. So let's just be honest with that. Yeah. Um, moving forward, anyway, Stardust against uh, Jack Swagger. Bit of a okay, Swagger exists still. Yeah. Apparently, Swagger had this match because he was frustrated how um, the real American Dusty Rhodes was um, being treated because he's a real American all this shit you know right? you know where you're yeah. going with it um, so in the middle of the match Goldust comes out serves out the distraction which gives Swagger the victory by uh, the Patriot Lock it wasn't a long enough match really to be good but I guess that was kind of the point they wanted it yeah. to be short and sweet and to Goldust to be the I like one. how they've already given up on Goldust's attire from Fastlane <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> um, like the trousers and that not? nah we're done with that yeah oh well, okay <laughs> maybe they'll keep it as like a main event uh, as a, a thing maybe that's his Finn Balor-esque making things special it does not really <laughs> the same you know <laughs> come on at Finn least Finn Bal- Balor's makeup stays in one place I would love right if they just I, in a perfect world, I know what I just said about Undertaker, but I don't, and it won't happen. But in a perfect world, we could have just one match against Belor and Undertaker. Just to see those two entrances back to back. I'd take that. That would be badass, you know. So. Yeah, but I wouldn't. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. Of course. It's just like it'd be really good for the entrances, and then the match would stink. Yeah, yeah. And I'd, it, hate, I'd hate to say it, like a Belor match would stink, but I think 
Finn Balor and The Undertaker would suck. Yeah. No, I fully agree with you. I really do. Uh, and that's just a shame. If a, if a Balor and Undertaker match would suck, then the Sting Undertaker match will as well. And I, I know still I still want it, but I, I just think that the visual of it is impressive. But yeah. Like, I've, I've never said a match between Undertaker and Sting would be good. I never said that. Anyway, um, so yeah, Swagger, uh, sorry, Stardust and Goldust, they're going to keep this ticking over. And if they are going to have another match at WrestleMania, then it goes to state that they, like Rusev and Cena, they should not have had a match at Fastlane. Outright. That's my opinion, but there we go. John Cena is out then, talking of John Cena, to address his loss at, uh, to Rusev at Fastlane. Uh, he says that he was uh, stuck stuck in the acolyte at Fastlane. I'm sure yeah, that was very was uncomfortable like, for JBL. Really? <laughs> stuck in J. Ron Simmons was outside. He just got stuck, you know, with John Cena's <laughs> side of him. Just yeah. got stuck in Ron Simmons. Yeah, that's it. Um, he says he I mean, lo- if anything, that would be the part of the prime excuse just to say, damn. <laughs> yeah, damn. Yeah, that's the ultimate. <laughs> Sorry, <challenge>. Ron. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Someone needs to Photoshop that. Stat it needs to be done right now. <laughs> Um, he says that anyway, Cena says that he lost um, with a, um, a, you know, when he says, oh, you know, he says, oh, I'm trying to explain this properly. When he says, oh, but I lost, he says it with kind of like a look of shock upon his face, like, I lost? <laughs> that, that happens? I can lose? I lose matches? And then he says, Rusev, here's the thing I don't understand with it. He says, Rusev is a coward. He's not a hero. I don't think, I'm sure that him winning against Cena... I know a lot of Russian fans that would probably be like, yeah, come on, Rusev, awesome, you know, our guy doing that sort of thing. I know it's all, you know, in storyline, but like, yeah, he's not a hero it's to the like, US, why? but he's never perceived he himself to be. you in the nuts. Like, yeah. <laughs> really? We're going to go that low? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm shocked that Rusev isn't the epitome of, you know, upstanding morals and, you know, he's never perceived himself to be. He's yeah. never said I'm that so, he's going to act that way. To forget the heel and face relationship of, of the WWE. Yeah. He's never booked the way that Cena's trying to stay oh he's not what he says he's never said that it's really stupid to me and like oh he's you can say oh well he meant he's not a hero to the Russian Federation he beat Cena of course he's a fucking hero to the Russian people (laughs) in storyline and out of storyline you know that's the way it is um anyway saying that brings out Rusev and Lana of course Lana who looks amazing every single week she digs on Cena however telling him that Rusev is the superior athlete and human being she says that Rusev has been receiving essentially what I'd state fan mail from his supporters in yeah. Russia and even Putin. So there you go. He's still a hero to the Russians in storyline, you know, so a bit of an idiotic response. And the thing is, I say that is because Cena says it again later on in the program. It's like, what are you getting at? What does that mean? You know, I don't, I don't understand really like, what you're getting at. What, did you not hear the whole, he got fan mail. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's a terrible person and he should be, rah. it's like, Shut no. up. <laughs> that shoddy camera moment that we stated happened just after that, so... You know, that but then also, the, the, the one thing I just remembered... Go on. The whole back panel just blew out, didn't it? Oh, it did, yeah, I remember that, yeah, just weirdly and randomly. And suddenly, oh, like the main screen was working, but the, like, the LED back wall pit just sort of, no, power just out. out. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, um, the production team were having a bit of a nightmare when they really <laughs> the other thing going on. It's the power of Lana's arse. She probably was like <laughs> bumped a plug or something. Yeah. Or something. The, the the machine itself was reaching out trying to touch and it broke. You know. That's what it is. <laughs> I don't blame it. I don't blame it. It's uh, it's it's pretty glorious. It's pretty glorious. Uh, <laughs> um, so Cena says I won a match at WrestleMania. Rusev obviously refuses. I mean, to be honest, I agree. He's already beat Cena. Why would he want to have another rematch? That's it. It's like, why'd you, why'd you get another one? I beat you. Yeah. Like, all this stuff that they're stating, oh, you're a coward and all this stuff, would make sense if Rusev intentionally got himself disqualified at Fastlane. But he beat Cena. Yeah. So, I, while I applaud him doing that... or not, like... Yeah, like, what... What does what, it matter? Like, what, I applaud him, let them doing that finish, but if... It just seems like this promo was made in mind with... Rusev being DQ'd the night before. Then you could say everything. You're no hero, even to your own people. You're just a coward. You run away from me. That would make sense. Here it doesn't. Well, the one thing is, like, you kicked you in the nuts. And that's not how I beat you, though, was it? Mm. It's like, I beat you because you passed out. And come on. It's got nothing to do with the fact that I kicked you in the in the nuts. Yeah. And was it, um, like, you know, 
Cena said this tons of time. Oh, you know, all this stuff happens in, in WWE. He's got to try and bounce back. And it's like, oh, now you're getting bitchy about a low blow, which happened all the time, you know, 10 years ago. Everyone got low blowed. Hell, everyone. if this was no mercy, we'd have had a ding. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, apparently he wants a rematch. I, I'm with Rusev. Why? Personally. Yeah. Um, way look at it. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, they could actually give... Um, let's have a look at it, because that's the end of the segment now. They could give Rusev the ultimate push here, but actually making him beat Cena twice in a row. But I'm not buying into that happening. Cena's going to beat him at Mania. That's the bottom line. Really. Yeah. And they may do it now that, oh, the only reason I'll give you a rematch is, is if it's without the United States Championship online, which would be stupid, because, you know, that means that the first match they had was way more prestigious. Even yeah. though it's the US title, it doesn't mean anything, but you know what I mean. Um... So yeah, Shh, they're trying to fix that. Yeah, they're trying to do something, but whenever they try and do something to make the belt look better, I'm just like, how long really are they going to keep up with this? Because if it's any more than two months, then that's much longer than what they've than they've ever done in the last five years. I think they've done better putting it, trying to get something back with it by just giving it to Rusev. Yeah, but I mean, I how many how many really strong title defenses has he had with that belt? Not many. Realistically, he beat Sheamus, and then he defended it against Swagger, which he already beat. Did he defend it against? No, Henry was just the whole America yeah. thing. Not yeah. for, never for the belt. I big show that show never for the belt. Yeah, exactly. So all these big stuff that he had yeah. was before he won the belt. So arguably, he still hasn't defended it. He, I think the only defense he had was against Swagger. I don't know. He may have had one or two easy ones here down the line, but really. Really, I, I still state that his the US title means jack shit. Yeah, you know? like I said, I've always said this before. You don't have to just keep the belt on him. Make have a really powerful segment of him destroying the belt, putting get, getting a sledgehammer and cracking it in front of everyone. Have pictures of people in the fans with their head hands on their heads, like oh shit, what the fuck has he done? And he's like, I'm not even going to replace this belt. This is a piece of shit to me. Yeah, I don't want to call myself your champion because your country's garbage. Awesome segment. Uber heat. You know, that could be on the front of his Titan Trons. You can use the man who destroyed the United States Championship. Yeah. Huge thing, but still. Backstage, Rollins is talking to Randy Orton about their match later in the night. Orton says he hasn't forgotten what Seth has done to him, but he's putting it all aside because that's best for business. That's the way yeah. It's like, whatever happens, they'll be on the same page. It's like, yeah, I ain't buying that. Mm-hmm. Rollins then proceeds to put his tongue on Orton's butthole. I haven't said that in a while. And um, when he says, oh, you know, if you... Uh, he agrees with Orton saying, oh, you, if you were around, you definitely would have won the Royal Rumble. You know, no one would have been able to beat you. They're all buddy-buddy here, pretty much. Uh, and like I said, it will build up to the feud. I just think it's overcomplicating it as well, as I said earlier. Then WWE air a Sting vignette showing off some of his greatest moments, both with the bleach blonde and the crow stuff. Um, had tons of people like, um, you know, interviews, Hulk Hogan, Cena, talking about Sting, and uh, I think they had Dusty Rhodes, I think, maybe, and uh, a few other people. Do they have Dusty? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I know they had Dean Ambrose. Yeah, I I mean, they, they, had, they had talent. Yeah. They had talent there, and, you know, they had Hogan definitely talking about it. And I tell you what, when they showed um, the footage of um, all the kids going mental for Sting, I tell you, I was one of those kids. I was going fucking mental for Sting at that time. He was like my favourite. Him him doing his work there and Bret Hart doing his work in WWE, those were my two guys. Glory know? days. You know. Um, so, you know, and at that time it was kind of much cooler to be watching WCW, so I was watching way more WCW than I was WWE at that point, so... Um, man, I didn't. I tell you, I was I was that young at that time, when Sting and Brett were in their heyday, that it kind of makes me wish I was older at that point, so I could really. I mean, now I can because I go back and watch all their matches, but to soak it in each week. Yeah. You know the popularity of Sting, the utter excellence of Bret Hart, just the experience in week in week out. That would have been really cool. Um. So yeah, I, I think this vignette was really really good. Their production, you know, their their video production team always been fantastic. Um, and I think they should air a lot more of these videos to remind some of their new audience why it's such a big deal that Sting is having a match at WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, because it is a big deal. But it's a big deal. there's still some moments where you've got people just like, I don't even know who he is. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he's such a huge um, star, but, like, to you and me, but, yeah, we have to admit that some of the newer fans, the John Cena era of fans, maybe yeah. don't know Sting that well. Well, especially considering, yeah. what, WCW 
like Triple H mentioned it, like, and now 14 years he's come mm. back. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, that's the average age of, like, a good proportion of the WWE universe now. That's a generation, right? Of, yeah. Of fans right there. So, yeah, no, I fully agree. And you got, as much as we love Sting, he's been in TNA all that time. Yeah. And come on, but him being in TNA does not appeal to general fans. It appeals to hardcore fans that watch TNA. Yeah. Doesn't appear. So, you know, fair enough. They want to educate people. I'm all up for them doing it because I tell you what, there's tons of awesome visual content that they can put on to promote him and tell you exactly what kind of guy he was. And that was. Yeah. Um, here we are. Here we go. Here we go. Paige and Emma against the Bella Twins. Yes. Whew. Okay. On the second episode, before we begin, on the second episode of this podcast, myself and Matt did a breakdown on how we would rebuild the Divas division. And... This is exactly opposite what we would do. Yeah. We're now on episode 64. So over a year has passed since we spoke about that. Has any of the things that we said, or even the things that we didn't say that could help the division, have any as has any of that actually happened? No. So we look at the division now, and we'll talk about this match because this brings up a lot of stuff, and this does get me very fucking. <laughs> but we'll talk about this match. Like, if you could call it that, yeah. Inverca, all the all the cameras, all the like. Like, this was a wrestling match. Yeah. It... This match, I would state, is an abomination. I think it's an example of how WWE do not care, and they do not care if you tweet them. Hashtag give, was it? Give Divas a chance or something like that. Yeah. They don't give a shit. As much as they might respond, Stephanie McMahon responding back to AJ or Vince McMahon stating on his Twitter, guys, the Divas division, as it is now, was not broken overnight it took years to get it as bad as it is now it will take years to get it better it's not fixed overnight this stuff doesn't get done overnight right if you're if you're an entire division is booked as a joke which realistically come on they have it is yeah right for years you can't fix that in a month or even in a night right it takes the same amount of time that you ruin something to rebuild it back up. Some yeah. stuff get just is some stuff is irre- irreparable. You just can't do it. Right? Let's talk about this match with that in the back of our minds. Whatever this thing is, because it, like you said, that it was barely a match. Paige and Emma in the ring, Bella Twins there. Essentially what happens is that or was it Emma gets distracted or Paige gets distracted, gets knocked off the, the Paige apron? Paige was still in the ring and she was shouting at the Bellas because obviously she'd lost the night before. Yeah. And then she finally leaves the ring. And then... Uh, bell rings. She gets knocked off the apron. Emma gets thing, you know, the fucking X Factor and then it's pinned. Yeah. That's how it ends. Um, this happened all under 30 seconds. Yeah. Are we going back... To the dark days where me and Matt would rant, and we fucking hate ranting, right? We really do. My my voice fucking despises it throughout the entire week. <laughs> really does. Um, about ranting, about having ten diva tag matches, having eight of the divas not even set foot into the ring, and have it finish under twenty seconds. Are we going back to those dark days? It's a big, like eighteen diva clusterfucks, yeah. This Matt. Right, let's put this in perspective. They have three hours of television a week on their flagship television show to give us a five minute, at very least, Divas match. Yep. Five minutes in three hours. I don't know about you to do the math, guys. That that fits in pretty fucking easy, right? Yeah. Especially the worst part is you like you look at NXT and they've got one hour. Yeah. And they'll still give us a five, like, even a ten minute. Was it? You know, they, they had a match. They, the last two weeks, they've had they had a match uh, against Blue Pants and Sasha Banks, right? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like a show stealer, but it was still serviceable, still decent to watch. Longer than 30 seconds, at least. A good match. This yeah. week, they had, uh, you know, Becky Lynch against Bailey. Yeah, again, yeah, it wasn't a show stealer, but it was still good. Still haven't seen it. 
but yeah, yeah, but it's longer than thirty seconds. You know, these guys, these girls get at very least a couple of minutes, and that's at very fucking least down yeah. there, right? And they have a third, a third of the time that the main roster has. There is no excuse. There is none. I mean, hell, you're talking about like pay per views, like oh, like. It's gonna be like Fast Lane, for example. We've got three hours. We'll give the we'll give the Diva Style had what? It had its five minutes. Yeah. So it had about a five minute match. Page and the Bellas. Mm. About that, yeah. They had yeah. a decent amount of length at the pay per view. Yeah. NXT Takeover Rival. We have two hours. Let's give them twenty it's for, minutes. Oh, it's yeah. We'll give them twenty minutes for our women's belt. Yeah. Huh? And it was one of the one of the best matches of the year in terms yeah. of the, sorry that fatal four way match for that belt is the best female wrestling match in WWE. Yeah, this year, right? Easily, it is a bad and sorry state of affairs that on the main roster they don't have a match in the top ten of last year, in my opinion. Yeah, it's all NXT, all of it. And and the, Vince can post on Twitter as much as he likes, right? Vince is the one that calls the shots. And he... It's not like, oh, sorry, this went under the marker. I know we shouldn't do this. We won't do this again. Next week, they might try and prove everyone that they are on the ball and they'll give them longer time. Just because it's become a thing, right? But let's say two months Don't from forget. now. Don't forget. Yeah, they will get... They, they, they have a way of... Fe- the, the, their way of thinking... Him and, you know, uh, apparently we hear that Kevin Dunn, you know, producer, doesn't like... Divas, right? The divas as they are at the moment, so they give them less time because they don't they don't like the way they're, they're perceived. I firmly believe that because Vince, in this current era, he can't show their tits and ass for ratings. He uses them as filler, and when they yeah. use as filler, that means they're there to buffer, you know, buffer other matches. And guess what? Buffer is thirty second matches. That's what buffer That's is. That's it. Well, it's like uh, like you get those moments where it's just sort of like because they were match before main event, weren't they? Yeah. Hmm. I reckon probably at the start of the night, like, before the first match, before anyone even walked out, before Randy, Randy Orton even walked through the through Gorilla to go outside, they were like, you guys are going to have ten minutes. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, that match over shot. You've guys got eight. Yeah. Six. Which means they're the You're lowest on gonna the run. You're going to go out there and show your faces, and that's probably about it. Well, you could say that about this week. They did have a couple of more segments after that. They weren't at the smack bang end of the show. But I get what you're saying because that would happen a lot. You know, we, yeah. we already saw it happen, um, you know, a lot of times with these divas, you know, and sometimes it involves divas that you're like, okay, I'm glad I didn't see them, like Cameron and Eva Marie matches. We don't want to see them. This is the worst. This is like getting into a part now where it's like, I have to openly admit, you've admitted to watching it because you watch it with your wife. Yeah. I now have to admit to I watch it. I have seen a few episodes of the beginning of Total Divas mm. where, I guess in like the first ever episode, they're like, oh no, we're going to have, we have a match at Mania. And then they're rushing around, and then it's like, what happened? Oh, it never actually happened. And yeah. the whole match just got cut. Yeah, the entire, and they did it in the next night, and it was garbage then, but to be honest. Yeah. yeah. But it's just like, that's exactly it. It's like the whole, oh yeah, we'll listen, we'll give Divas the opportunity, but you won't. No, no, no. Listen, like, if they wanted to, at this point, if it was their part of their of their thoughts, and the way that they, they, they think about booking their show, it wouldn't have got to this point to begin with. Yeah. Right? And sorry guys, maybe I sound jaded, maybe I sound cynical. I argue this is me being factual and realistic, right? You can tweet all you like. It may make a difference next week, it won't make a difference next year. That's the big problem. Yeah. Right? WWE doesn't give a shit. They don't care about the divas on their roster, otherwise they would treat them differently, right? We're we are a long way away from when two whip female wrestlers main evented raw. And Here's this. Here, landscape, it'll never happen. Here's the biggest insult of all. Are you ready for this? Are you? This will piss you off. The same amount, if not more amount of time was shown showing Eva Marie and Cameron at the, you know, the, the Oscars at the runway, you know, at the, the red yep. carpet, than this match actually, you know, the length of this match. Yeah. There you go. That's all the proof you need. Done. That's how WWE think of things. The cutaway segment is more valuable, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? If they had done this 30-second match, right, and none of this other stuff would have happened, you and me would have blasted it not nearly as bad as we are now. We were going, well, come on, you know, what can we expect? But it's the way they try and perceive, we will try better next time. We understand. No, you fucking don't. Or you do understand and you just don't care. That's the bottom of it, right? If I were 
any of the, even the bellers, right? If I were any of them, I mean, they're getting paid regardless. But if they take their craft seriously, they must look at stuff like this and think, why the fuck do we turn up to work? Yeah. You know? No wonder all these girls are clamouring to get on Total Divas. At least they can do something there. At least they can be on camera. At least they can be or somewhere for le- for more than 30 minutes, 30 seconds. You know? When, when a match, the entrances to a match are longer than the match itself, that is pathetic. That's embarrassing. So whoever booked it, and I think they should be ashamed. Do you know one thing I kind of don't like? is the fact that that's also... Like, Paige came out, and then they ran the Sting video. Yeah, yeah. And it's like... You've got someone who's just made an entrance. Like, you're not going to have this match? Mm. They can wait. What, what, you, what? You've got two people in the ring. No, I can wait. Are they just going to stand there for the, like, the next, like... What the fact that Emma just turned up out of nowhere as well? Yeah. Like, Paige make, comes out, Sting vignette, Paige and Emma are in the ring, Paige's music still playing. What? <laughs> I know what you mean. It's... it's you know, I'll mean, tell you what, the, the crux of it, they don't give a shit. We all yeah. know, right? And you and me can rant about this all day long. We have. I, I've, you know, I ranted till my voice has gone. The, the, what, what pisses me off is people tweeting, honestly thinking that makes a difference. And that, yeah. that includes AJ making that tweet. Because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if there's one person that has no time for what AJ says, it's Stephanie McMahon. Because yeah. she's married to CM Punk. And she fucking hates the guy. So she ain't going to listen to anything AJ has to say outright. She will say what is PC and what everyone wants her to say at the moment. But like I said, it's not about what changes next week. In two weeks' time, things will go back to the same. We've seen it. We've we've seen enough of it. And I don't want to. I, I don't want to rant about. It. I hate fucking hate ranting on this show. I know our fans enjoy us doing it, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Like this, just like I said, I'm not even. I'm not even jaded or cynical. I'm just being factual and realistic at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, and it's, it's and I'll tell you what it'd be even it would be okay if they had a roster full of women who can't wrestle, but they have a roster of women who can wrestle. There's some who can't, but look at all the the four women that they had in the ring can wrestle. They can do a match, a good one. I right, right, let's move on. Unless you've got anything else yeah, to rant about, I think, I think we're going to have to because like man, we're we're running out of time here as we haven't even finished this because we ranted about that. But come on, guys, let's get realistic. They're not going to change anything because that's the way they think. If Vince can't show their tits and ass, then he feels that they're not going to sell tickets, in which case he's not going to give them time. Yeah. I asked that question ages ago. I think this, this segment and stuff like this shows that that's the reason he thinks of that. Because apparently PG Divas just don't draw money, so we ain't going to use them. Anyway, they show a video package for the Bushwhackers induction. I'm in a bad mood now. <laughs> um, there are... The thing about the Bushwhackers induction is that, first of all, I don't think they should be inducted. Yep. There's that bombshell. And if they were, there's tons of teams above them. The likes of Demolition, who should be inducted. Mm-hmm. Um, there are tons of tag teams. You know, for instance, you know, you could pretty much induct, you know, Edge and Christian as a tag team. You should probably induct them. Ed, Ed, Christian should definitely be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, you could even induct the Dudley Boys into the Hall of Fame. I know they're in the TNA Hall of Fame, but no one barely knows that exists. You can induct them into the Hall of Fame, um, who were far more influential. And Come on, the Bushwhackers were nothing <laughs> more than comedy, you know? Yeah. Arguably, and arguably, they were on the same level as Santino and Kozlov. Should they get inducted? Well, that, yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, you've got to consider the fact that even during that video package that they put up... Mm. It showed one of them just sort of like just, just march into the ring, shut out, march off again. Yeah. Like, um, and why? Here's another one: New Age Outlaws. Why don't they get inducted first? They still should get inducted. Active? I mean, not active as a team, but I'd argue that they've still got people there that Hall of Famers that still wrestled after they got inducted. It's not an issue. Yeah. Well, Booker still wrestles. Well, he doesn't wrestle on TV, but I know there has been people who have. You know, there's oh, who still wrestle on TV? Yeah. You know, they had... Uh, Jerry Lawler was inducted, and he wrestled after that. in the, in, in one yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. You know, he yeah. still was in the ring, you know. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, not, it's, not like a, it's not like a rule that gets upheld. You Shawn know? Michaels? Well, no, he was no. then... He was inducted way after his retirement, man. No, I'm on about when he was um, special guest ref. Yeah, but it's not in a match, you know what I mean? 
Like I, I he I, still took hits and gave yeah, kicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know what I mean. You know, the fact is that New Age Outlaw is definitely yeah. worth an induction. Um, so yeah, to me, Bushwhackers. Well, got Rikishi. Why not get the rest of two cool in? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but the thing is, like with the Bushwhackers as well, is that you've got the Bushwhackers now standing next to Rikishi, and it's not so much I have. Dis- I don't. I just like like. I've said that I don't think either of them should be inducted, and I stand by that. But it's also WWE's perception. They showed Rikishi shoving their asses into people's face. They showed the Bushwhackers as being nothing but comedy. Yeah. It's, the, the Hall of Fame this year is looking like a bit of a joke, really. It, seem, it, seem, it feels like a bottom-of-the-barrel sort of ceremony. Yeah. Like, they've got Macho Man, fair enough, but... Mm, they've got Arnie! Yeah, Arnold, yeah. Fucking celebrity wing I just, like, despise anyway, but... Arnie! Arnie! Yeah. You cannot hate it. <laughs> you slapped Triple H. <laughs> Punched him in the face. Oh, dear. You do have a great Arnie, by the way. That's fantastic. Oh, thank Props God. To you. <laughs> Very good. Uh, let's go on anyway. Um, we're running out of time. We've still got a bit to talk about. Curtis Axel versus Ryback. Curtis Axel's out in the ring. He's telling us not oh, to yeah, turn off the channel. This bit. <laughs> yeah. He tells us not to turn off the channel again, which, as I said before, is good because I'm always tempted to turn over the channel whenever he's on. Even though I have I to, so, I think somebody needs to tell Curtis though. He's not in. He's he hasn't been eliminated. That's fine. But you never entered the ring. <gasps> you got a loophole. He never officially entered the match, did no. he? No. Oh, it's really starting to annoy me. It's like like oh, if he got into like, the ring and then was like thrown through the middle rope and then never was dealt with. Like, do yeah, you think that that's would count? It. <sighs> there you go. But now it's like oh, I'm like 37 days and I've not. It's like. You never set foot in the ring. Yeah, someone you never needs to made it to the ring. Like that's like saying because you remember like the elimination chamber. Edge attacked Kofi. Kofi yeah. never made it into the elimination chamber. It's not like Kofi is still waiting to pin someone. Yeah, I get. No, I get exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you got. Yeah, you're completely right with it. Everyone didn't think of that. You need to. You need to tweet that. You know, break break his heart. You know that he's, he hasn't got anything to hold on to. Yeah. You know? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, as you so said, I'm not the only person who's seen this. <laughs> well, no, I just never thought of it. You know, I just like, oh, just, to be honest, I, it's Curtis Axel. I don't give him that much brain power towards anything the guy. Even like JBL, just like, oh my god, it's so true. It's like it's it's not. <laughs> he was never there at all. He says apparently, anyway, with all that, he's going to be in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Um, I would state that now is the time that you should cover Axel in syrup and sauce because it's feeding time. Yep. Time to bring out Ryback. And I would state, you know what? You know, considering I had a 30-second match beforehand, I would like for Ryback to go back to his squashing days. You know, that was fun. I enjoyed yep. those days. They were all right. Um, so, yeah. Um, I will state, though, that with Ryback taking the mic, he cut a fucking awful promo. That was yeah. obviously written by whoever wrote Roman Reigns' promos last month. Because they stank of exactly the same style. Whoever's writing them, and hell, it might be Vince, because apparently it is Vince, yeah. Then he needs to stop writing, because they're fucking shit. They are really bad. Yeah, that's it. Um, he, Ryback's promo sucked. It stank. It really was bad. It really was. Um, so yeah, this match only lasts, like I said, it lasts a little bit longer than the Divas match, not by much. Um, and then it's just meat hook, shell shock, pin done but in this case i'm just like let's just go back to to ride back to squashing guys let's just do that much uh, i had fun when he was doing that you know you know the way it is. then eventually you can bring corbin up and you can have the two squashing guys going against each other why not <laughs> and corbin can beat him because i think corbin's got way more going for him even though i do like Ryback. well the right back oh yeah definitely yeah. Well, corbin's got more going for him than right back yeah, yeah fair enough yeah definitely Maybe before Ryback was ruined by those eleven or something like seven or eight consecutive pay per view losses, possibly. But I think that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way it is at the moment. Rollins, Orton, Reigns, and Bryan is the main event. I'm glad because you know this this episode. You sure about that? Because I'm pretty sure it was um like Bryan, Reigns, Orton, Rollins, Kane, Big Show, J and J. (laughs) No, we call Kane, Rollins, Big Show. uh, No, Kane. Big Show and J and J, they're they're the um the guys in the bleachers just you know clapping. That's what they do now. So. I would say actually that you know because they they're at, they're they're at ringside clapping for everything that Orton and Rollins does right. Maybe we need some guys like that. So whenever we make a bad joke, we can get people. To go, yeah, oh! you know, that'd be awesome. Yeah, you know? that's what we need. We need hype guys. 
It's, it's weird that you have to hire your own stage audience because the fans aren't getting into it. <laughs> They're yeah. joking here. Like, yeah? No! <laughs> oh. Now, they've showed just before this match the back and forth between Jon Stewart and Rollins. This Jon Stewart of The Daily Show. He oh, will... I this bit again. He, he will be appearing on Raw next week. And you know what? For what it's worth... Oh, uh, okay. That's... Yeah. Well, <laughs> you don't really care. Like I, said, I skipped it. It's like, and here we go for The Daily Show. It's like, nope, I forget. I'm British and I don't care. <laughs> Well, did you actually at least see... Um, I saw last week's. No, did you see um, Stewart's like, first promo against against Rollins? Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought I it was great. Saw, I thought it was I really saw, good. Uh, yeah. Guy's got a promo in him, at least, you know. Probably from obviously talking on a show for that time, so... Yeah. But it's just like, and then, then that was it. I was just like, I really don't care. Where they're going with it, though, I just don't know. It's a bit odd, but... I don't care. Maybe they have John Stewart and Randy Orton side at WrestleMania. Oh, God. It's just... The randomness of that still. It'll be ringside, just like... Mm. The, the, the match itself, though, let's go into the match. The match itself, I thought, was decent enough. Had some good action in it. Uh, Rollins forces the tag towards the end of the match, which pisses off Randy Orton to no end to the fact that he just doesn't get back into the ring for the majority. And when Bre- Brian and Reigns do the same, Reigns just laugh, laughs it off. And a lot of them are like, oh, yeah. you see how Reigns takes it, he's completely happy. They didn't seem to state that it was just a throwback to the fact that Brian did it to him you know, last month, and now yeah, all their yeah. beef is done, there's no reason for them to be pissy about it anymore, it's like them getting, you know, Reigns was laughing because it was like, oh, fair enough, I did it to you, so I can't really be pissed, you know, so they never made any reference to that, but I'm pretty sure that was the reason why that segment, why it was done that way. That so. could be it, yeah. Um. So then, you know, Brian hits the, the flying knee, which they need to get a name for, they still haven't named that move. Yeah. Name it. Um. And then he pins, you know, Rollins. Because Orton just refuses to get back into the ring. Orton's still pissed off. He, uh, as he looks like he's going to, you know, attack uh, Rollins. Uh, JJ security try and stop him. He RKO's Noble, and then he just picks up Rollins, pats him, walks out of the ring, pretty much. Um, yeah. And then uh, what was kind of weird is that you thought, okay, they're going to sign off the show. Actually, they don't. They spend like the last like two minutes with the announcers just looking at the the camera, talking about why they should, why people should get the WWE Network. Which is like, come on, guys, you could plug this oh, in different no. times. <laughs> right at the no, end of the show. I've just had a flashback. Go on, Booker T singing. Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, you enjoy that? Uh, I don't know. Shucky ducky quack quack. Birthday. Does it? It's like, how could you fuck up Happy Birthday? <laughs> he but can. Booker T it. does it. Yeah. Uh, who knows, R-Truth is maybe gunning for his position and the person who can talk the most nonsensical on commentary. R-Truth yeah. gunning for, for Booker T. Oh dear. Let's talk about the match overall. All in all, if this was supposed to be the drive to WrestleMania, it, you know, they, instead of it being in a Ford Focus, uh, you know, sorry, in a Ford Mustang, it's in more of a, in a, in a Ford Focus. That's what I'd say. It's a slow start. Um, but it's not to state that it's bad. I just think that they're, you know, start of a gradual build. Um, and I think that the, some of the rivalries are stunted, obviously, because Lesnar walked out. That's the, the Lesnar-Reigns rivalry, a little bit stunted from the start. And then you've got Undertaker not showing up at WrestleMania. That means Wyatt has got to do all these promos by himself. Um, I, I don't believe it, though. It's like, oh, he'll never turn up until Mania itself. I don't actually buy it. I buy it. I think he won't show up until Mania. And then he'll have the match at Mania. And then you won't see him again. That's what I think. You know, we'll see. You know, maybe he will show up from there. From there on. But... I just think it's silly. I think it's silly, but... Because you need, you need the back and forth. Otherwise, how am I... Like, I'm going to care enough for this match anyway, because I'm already, I'm already invested in it. Like, take, take but... a... They, at the very least, they have to announce that the match will definitely happen. They can't keep going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Of, like, at least I wonder the, if he's there. At least the Raw before... Yeah, because I mean, they have to advertise it, that that Taker will be there. I mean, it's just it makes no sense for them to make it too. Crit- will he be at WrestleMania? Because some people will be like, oh, I'm not going to buy it. Most people will, but some people will be like, oh, I, I, there's no assurance that he will be there. And we've been burned by WWE before by that sort of shit, you know, promising us a really kick-ass match. Like I remember they did it last year, Rollins against um, Ambrose. Their first match was not a match; it was just literally dig you done. And it was yeah. like, people bought the event to watch these guys kick the shit out of each other, and you just robbed them of one of their main of their one of their main events. Of the one thing, it's like you're not meant to be caring about this. John Cena's wrestling. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> over here, look, you know, 
the champ is here, sort of thing. John like. Cena's over here, yeah, but Rollins and Ambrose are over there. <laughs> oh, you aren't going to be too happy. Yeah, exactly. Why? Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Um, just, uh... <laughs> just WWE logic sometimes, though, isn't it? Um, but still... I thought the show was okay to watch. You won't want to watch it again. And there are, are a few moments, especially the Divas stuff, that will fucking frustrate you, just outright. Mm. Uh, it frustrated me. Um, but, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. So watch it once, don't watch it again. There's no point. Um, there was no. I'll tell you what, if you're going to watch anything to build up the um, the rivalries of these matches and stuff, to go back and watch the two non-wrestling segments at Fastlane. They did way more. No, then this show could for any of the yeah it's like you kind of just go for uh, Reigns and Heyman in the ring and maybe the Sting vignette yeah yeah yeah. I mean I thought the Sting vignette was brilliant and that segment with, with Reigns was very good and there was some good action to be found but that's why I said there watch it once but Nah, that's pretty much it. Anything good this week will just get replayed next week. So that's the bottom line of it. So, um, so that's the show this week. We have gone well over two hours. So um, I'm kind of glad now that I did pull the the photo of the week because this that coupled with the um, the review of the network that we were supposed oh, to do, God, we, could, yeah. we could have been here until the early hours of the morning. And I, as much as I love podcasting, my throat won't take that. So, <laughs> I think we could just simply do uh, network review. If only Raw was actually, if only Raw wasn't three months out of date. No, I don't. I don't want to ham show it. I, I do. I have got a full <laughs> review of the network plan. Yeah. Just, we need to. We need to get there. You know, we'll get. I there. know. So that's the way it is. Um, so yeah, we do apologise about that, guys. But come on, with the amount of news coming up, if we don't, we, the thing is with the news and everything, we have to cover it that week. You know, that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah, so. that's it. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, there... it just it just won't make sense. Other if we were just like, yeah, three weeks ago this happened. Yeah, why? <laughs> then it's irrelevant. You know, there's no point in talking about that. Um, so, is there anything else you want to cover this week before we wrap up? No, I've got nothing left. Yeah. Um, thanks, thanks you, uh, for you guys for joining us for this uh, extra long episode of the Let's Talk Wrestling podcast. Uh, we do appreciate all the support that you guys have done in terms of getting us, um, you know, more exposure and everything. It's fantastic. Uh, we do hope to break 250 subscribers soon. Um, and that would be a great another milestone that we that we break on this podcast. Um, and like I said, our ultimate goal realistically is to try and get 400 by the end of the what was it by the end of the year? Did we say? Or before? I think then? we said year. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, if we have that, I'll be more than fucking happy. I really will. So, um, 400. But you know, we're we're going at a steady pace. Things are going great. And we do appreciate all the support, all the questions that you ask. If you do want to ask any questions, then you can leave it in the comments below. You can also follow us at Talk Wrestle Pod. Matt handles our Twitter handle, and you'll uh, you can ask him any questions there. Um, you'll either get a direct response from him, or if he thinks that the answer is good enough, then he'll bring it to me on the show. That's the the way it goes. Um, but yeah, if you are a new listener and you did enjoy this show, then subscribe we'd love to you know for you to join us along this each week um every every single uh sunday and that this um show goes up and obviously we review the pay-per-views as well the next one will be wrestlemania so that's going to be a pretty big one to do that's it and hopefully now, ne- i don't know about you as, just quickly as a parent are you going to be watching mania the next morning oh yeah that's i was it, talking it, about that it is I was mania talking- I probably will be watching Mania Live and dealing with the, the fatigue. The content. after effects. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, right, is that, um, you know, for anyone that knows, I'm a, st- I'm a stay-at-home dad because I'm safe. I've already said it before, I have no issue saying it again. Um, but my kids have, like, playgroup on Monday, so I've got, like, yes, I can sleep after, like, like 11 o'clock. So I'm going to stay up, watch it, and then as soon as the kids are out of the door, I'm just like, <sighs> straight off. Like, back to bed. Because I know my kids will come back and just talk. Me and be like, come on, let's play, and I'll be like, okay, okay. She's like, no. That's it. I'll get. I'll just. I'll put WrestleMania on for them, and they can watch. You know, see how long they. That's it. You know, peaks they can get interest. Um. So yeah, that's the show this week, guys. Like I said, hope you did enjoy. If you did enjoy it as well, if you do want to support even further, then you can share it over social media. You can also like the video. Not as important, but we do like it. And um, yeah, we hope you guys have a great week. And, that's, um, that's us. I'm out. Nice. I'm gonna go rest my throat because it fucking hurts. <laughs> oh, that diva's rad. Jesus Christ. Jeez. All right, then, guys. We'll catch you again next week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.